College Football 25 Dynasty. I got early access thanks to the EA Creator Network, and I'm so excited. And remember, this build I'm playing on is a work in progress. And for my first ever rebuild, we'll be rebuilding one of the worst programs in College Football 25, the Old Dominion Monarchs, with the end goal of winning the national championship. A one-star program with a 73 overall offense, a 76 overall defense. We're of course, going to be head coach. And new this year, you can create your own head coach with specific attributes. You could be a motivator, a recruiter, or a tactician. Motivators boost ratings and composure. Recruiters scout faster and better. And tacticians boost players' ratings on game day. Frankly, we could use all three of those, but I'm going to try out tactician. I need my players to play well in big games. Old Dominion's offense is veer and shoot, which is a quick play style, and it spreads out your wide receivers a lot. Depending on how this program goes, we may have to change that. And our defense is a 4-2-5 with four down linemen, two linebackers, and five players in the secondary. I'm cranking my offensive aggressiveness to 70. I'll be totally honest, I have no idea what that does, but I'm excited to find out. And this face scan looks a little bit more like me. Also, I'm a quarter zip guy. Last year, Old Dominion was six and seven, and the year before that, they were three and nine. The last time we had a bowl game appearance was in 2016 when we went 10 and three and went to the Bahamas Bowl. My goal naturally is to win the national championship. We've got a three-year contract to start out. Let's get after it. First things first, I know nothing about Old Dominion. What kind of players do we have? <laughs> Jason Henderson. Old Dominion's got a 91 overall linebacker. That might be one of the best linebackers in the game. Jason Henderson is the fourth best linebacker in the game. Behind Nick Jackson, Matt Salopek, Barrett Carter. He was a two-star in high school and now is a senior at Old Dominion. He's our best player. He develops at a faster rate than normal. He's a pass coverage linebacker. 99 IQ, 98 run stopping. He's got the natural fan favorite and clear-headed as mental abilities and house call knockout bouncer hammer and wrap up on his physicals. This guy's a stud. Now the only bummer, Jason Henderson is a senior. We'll have exactly one season with our stud linebacker. There's a big drop off after Henderson though. Our next best player is our D tackle, Denzel Lowry, who is a junior. Our third best player is a red shirt freshman, Devin Roche. He's got four physical abilities. He's got gold shifty. He's 5'7", 166 with 90 speed. I'll earn skill points throughout the season and I can use those skill points to upgrade my players. So it's significantly different than Madden where players are automatically progressing. I'll definitely be investing some time into Devin Roche. And our quarterback is not bad at all. Grant Wilson's a junior. He's a 78 overall. We'll have at least two really solid years out of him. After that, we're looking really thin at every other position. No standout wide receivers. There's no standout corners at all. And we're currently in a 4-2-5 defense, meaning our secondary is really important. Oh uh, yeah, these corners are not going to cut it. Our safeties are not going to cut it. And our strong safeties are not going to cut it. I think we need to target a wide receiver and secondary in our recruiting board. Now keep in mind, we're Old Dominion. We're a one-star. We don't have a shot at any good prospects. And frankly, even a two-star like Marquise Denley here, his top five schools are Kentucky, Northwestern, Michigan State, Minnesota, and TCU. On the My School page, we can see how we rank in certain aspects that prospects like. For example, as far as being a championship contender, we're a D+. That makes sense. We've got some work to do. Coach stability and coach prestige are actually pretty solid. Pro potential stadium atmosphere and campus lifestyle are all average and our program traditions brand exposure conference prestige academic prestige athletic facilities all seriously need some work the good news is as we continue to win games improve our players virtually all of these will go up. So I think this first year is going to be very important for landing some solid prospects. If we go 2-10 and 10 in the Sun Belt, I'm not getting anybody. So this is a big year. My board is set. We've got Deshaun Melvin, Nate Lambeau, Jason Hearns, Afateo, DJ McDonald, Nicholas Rochelle, and Curtis Price. They're all one stars with relative interest in Old Dominion. And in the top right, you can see I have 450 recruiting hours available. I'll start, ooh, after scouting Melvin, he's in the upper echelon of the speed tier and in a God tier realm on acceleration. He's a 6'1 deep threat wide receiver. This dude is fast. His deep route is average. His release is not good. Definitely gonna offer him a scholarship if we can move the needle on to Sean Melvin. Nate Lambeau's got 55 play rec. I'm still gonna offer it to all these guys, but I don't like how that looks. 
weeks. Jason Hearns is a relatively fast outside linebacker. He is pass coverage, and that's what I want, especially in a 4-2-5. I need two stud linebackers. Afateo is a free safety. It's all right. McDonald's a white corner. Let's get a little Cooper DeGene. Rochelle looks like a full-grown man. Getting an offer as well, and same for Curtis Price. We're at risk of losing a 71 overall wide receiver and a 71 halfback. Have fun in the portal, gentlemen. I'm over it. Quickly became a leader for Deshaun Melvin. Nate Lambeau likes James Madison. Hearns has got a lot of people looking at him. Afateo, we're leading the charge. Not so much on McDonald. We're close on Rochelle, and Curtis Price likes us the best, too. Take a look at our schedule. Game one, South Carolina. That's gonna be tough. Then we got ECU, Virginia Tech, Bowling Green, Coastal Carolina, Georgia State, Texas State, Georgia Southern, App State, James Madison, Marshall, Arkansas State. It's a relatively easy schedule, but we suck. I'm gonna send a house at Jason Hearns. I really like him. It's a lot of hours, but we're sending it. I'm gonna have Nate Lambeau visit during ECU week at home, and I like our odds of beating ECU a lot better than South Carolina. We'll give him some one-on-one -on -one coaching, since that's pretty much all we're good at. <laughs> yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough week one game. At South Carolina, they got a monster squad. You never know, man. We come out swinging, silence this crowd. This could be an exciting start to the rebuild. There's Grant Wilson, baby. Through the first quarter, it's three to seven to three. Seven to 10, 14, 10. There's no way. Wait a minute, are we gonna pull this off? We're smacking them at halftime. 24 to 13, 27 to 13, we're hissing on them. Old Dominion walks into South Carolina. 11 overalls down, and they're three minutes away from a week one victory. You're lying. The name of the game is Chew Clock. It's 27 to 19. Grant Wilson to hand off to Roche. Ooh, halfback slip screen. Picks up a lot of yards, keeps the clock ticking. No, no. Steps up, swatted down, but there's a flag. He's gonna step up and scramble, no. He's gonna deliver, dropped. South Carolina finds themselves at third and long. It's a slip screen to their star running back, tackled. Five on defense is making some huge plays. He's basically a hybrid safety since this is a 4-2-5, but he just made both of those plays. Fourth down, they deliver! For the sticks, gentlemen. First and goal, South Carolina's only got one timeout left. Back in motion, it's a screen, tackled. Do they call a timeout? No, they do. The recruits are gonna love us if we can pull this off. Second and goal, play action. No, get home, somebody get home! He doesn't criminal bag sell. If he takes off right there, that is a touchdown. Tries to throw it into quad coverage. It's third and goal, over the middle! Caught, touchdown South Carolina. 25 to 27, now for the biggest play of the game. Two point conversion, it's a jet sweep! And we can't get there, it is 27 to 27. We've got three timeouts though, and we just need field goal range. The stadium is real loud. Grant Wilson finds an open man. Grant Wilson, clean pocket, unloads! Where you going, Grant? Psycho! Hey, this is why we run veer and shoot. We got five wide, empty backfield. Second and 10, Grant Wilson, super clean pocket. Third and 10, coach, if you don't get this, you going for it? Third and 10, a quick pass, it's caught! It's caught! Remember, these are college kickers, not Justin Tucker. That's a 55 yard field goal if we kicked it from right here. It's a handoff. They're bringing the kicker out right now. 19 seconds left, second and eight. It's a 52 yard field goal. It's up! It's good! Are you dabbing him up? You're on the other team! He's number 92, bro. My kicker's number 92. South Carolina is in Hail Mary. You need everything here. No timeouts left. You gotta unload that football! And he goes down! And on the season opener, Old Dominion upsets South Carolina. The best start imaginable. A one-star rebuild. Look at Old Dominion! Yeah, Lenora Sellers actually had a really good game. Grant Wilson was just better. 20 for 32. Three touchdowns touchdowns, no interceptions. Our run game was pitiful though. Devin Roche, the guy I like a lot, averaging 2.6 yards per carry. Isaiah Page was our standout wide receiver with two touchdowns. He is a senior though. I really like to see my freshman get involved. And there's my favorite player, Jason Henderson. One and a half sacks. Nice work. Nate Lambeau does commit to James Madison. Melvin, Hearns, Teo, McDonald, Rochelle, and Price, along with Tyrone McAvoy, are all looking like they're headed to Old Dominion. After a really solid season opener, I added some new recruits. We'll see how they feel after this next week. So much for that 
visit with Nate Lambeau though. Next up is the Purple Pirates, ECU. How did we just beat South Carolina and lose the ECU? It was a close game, but ECU came out on top 31 to 28. Lost to ECU, we got Virginia Tech next. I'm gonna step in to see how this goes. At home, and it's a cloudy, rainy day in Virginia, but our fans are still kinda here. I wouldn't say the stadium's packed, but it's just the diehards in the audience when it's raining. I think we're only good against good teams because it's 21 to 10 at half. A 21-24, whoa, that was quick. 31, 21, 30, yikes, yikes. Ah, uh, wait a minute, it's our ball. It's 41 to 35, it's first and 10. And it looks like we got a little Cooper Cup. Second and five, we're almost under a minute, but Grant Wilson is a, dude, how do we lose to the Purple Pirates? Come on, baby, this is for the Sun Belt. Grant Wilson unloads, no, it's short. Coach, I wanna know what kind of play call you're running a 18 to 15 comeback when you need 18 yards. And Virginia Tech's gonna run this one out. We have no timeouts. Wilson, this one is not on you, buddy. It's a spectacular game. Fall to one and two. We had a miraculous win against South Carolina. I think we put ourselves on the map and now two straight losses. Here's how we stack up against the rest of the Sun Belt. We're not last. We have two and oh Arkansas State at the end of our season and we don't even face the Raging Cajuns. We could still win the Sun Belt. We do have some commits though. Nicholas Rochelle committed. Tyrone McAvoy committed. And after beating South Carolina, our championship contender status went up significantly. And look at that, in week eight against Texas State, we won a Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week for Robert Hodges Diamond. Everybody knows all college football players' dreams are to win Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week. Sorry, I'm talking shit. And now a Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Week in week nine versus Georgia Southern. Damn. Kelby Williams, 150 yards, three touchdowns. Not bad. A little more than halfway through the season, we're five and three, taking on six and two apps State, who is 4-0 in the Sun Belt. We beat Bowling Green by a touchdown. Same thing against Coastal Carolina. Got smacked around by Georgia State. Snuck past Texas State. And whoa, game against Georgia Southern. Are currently projected to have a bowl game. The Cure, the Cure Bowl beats me. It ain't the Rose Bowl, I'll tell you that. I also found this three-star linebacker, Jason Chun. It's a long shot but I'm gonna send the house. Let's see how we do against App State. Curtis Price commits. Earl Nene, hey, commits. Oh, I think we lost to App State. Got Brett Goskowski. We lost to App State, we got James Madison next. Jason Chun would have actually signed with us, but we don't have his deal breaker anymore after we lost to App State. So if I can close the season out strong, he may actually sign with us. Not to mention Jason Tucker, a two-star tight end, does want to sign with us. Honestly, I thought I'd only be able to get one stars, but it looks like two and three stars are very viable. I'm spending a lot of hours on Calvin Zimbrano, Brian Camella, and Earl So, D tackle, left guard, and wide receiver. I really didn't think I'd be able to get solid guys like this, but it's possible. Another commit, another commit, and we beat James Madison, which makes us a B minus championship contender, which means we can still land that three star linebacker. And our next game is against two and eight Marshall. This should be an easy W. And there's Afateo committed, Greg Tobin committed. Committed, Calvin Zambrano, three-star. Wait, solid recruiting class. We are the front runner for three-star Zambrano D tackle. The front runner for three-star Camella and tough competition for the two-star wide receiver. And our final game of season one is against Arkansas State. Also in the Sun Belt, they're eight and three. We're seven and four. This is a huge game. So Arkansas State is six and one in the Sun Belt. We're five and two. So if we win here, I think the head-to-head -head matchup should make us First in the Sun Belt. No scoring in the first quarter. Arkansas State, now 10 0, now 10 7. Oh no. Oh no. 13 21. 21 21. <gasps> 24 to 21. Victory formation for Grant Wilson. We're going to beat the Red Wolves. And I think we're going to win the Sun Belt. Let's go! Old Dominion, 24 to 21, huge. Now granted, we've got a long ways to go to win the national championship, but we have proven one thing. We can beat a good team. We beat South Carolina. We got spun around by Georgia State. But wow, that's an awesome first season. Oh, we're not at the top of the Sun Belt. I forgot about App State. We come in second in the Sun Belt, but App State, seven and zero. Oh. So that's our team to beat right now. We already lost to them this season. Also, the Sun Belt is broken up into the East and the West, so technically Arkansas State is at the top of the West, but Jason Tucker, our first two-star commit, the tight end, is headed to Old Dominion. Eight and four in the regular season. Here's how my coach abilities are looking as well. So we're a tactician. I've got points in all the starting abilities. So for example, 
I get boosts to throwing attributes, run game attributes, receiving attributes, maxed out the O-line, had to do it. I love my O-line. And this right here is exactly why I chose Tactician. Frankly, I don't think we'd be eight and four on this season if it wasn't for Tactician. Keep in mind, when you choose a coach's archetype, it does lock off the other archetypes. So I could have been a motivator, but that's locked off for me right now. I could unlock it with skill points, but if I wanted to be an architect, for example, there are unlock requirements. So if I win four rivalry games and spend 25 in motivator, I have access to it. It's a really cool coaching system that you actually want to pay attention to. And hey, it's working out right now. And the Heisman winner is in Grayson McCall of NC State. 39 touchdowns, five interceptions. I wonder if Grant Wilson was even in the running. I doubt it, but whew. And we do get a bowl game, of course. Uh, gosh, there's a lot of bowl games. This is the 68 Ventures Bowl against the Western Michigan Broncos. It's bowl game season, baby. The Broncos are actually a really solid program. There was a year, sometime last five or six years, where they went undefeated in the regular season. The 68 Ventures Bowl in Alabama. You gotta start somewhere, and we had a good first season. I am not gonna complain. Western Michigan's got a big lead at halftime, and they're just increasing it. That defense is holding us. Our first bowl game appearance since 2016. We got smacked by 11 by the Western Michigan Broncos. Hayden Wolf went off, and we did. Honestly, though, look at Grant Wilson's season. This wasn't far off from the Heisman. 3,700 yards, 36 and eight. That's amazing for Old Dominion QB. Devin Roche, I, m my thought is that this veer and shoot offense is just not halfback friendly at all because these are not very good stats. 567 and three. Looks like we, I mean, Grant Wilson almost rushed for more than him. He also had three fumbles. So I did expect a little more out of him. Kelby Williams was our number one wide receiver with 918 and 10. Isaiah Page and Miles Alston also had eight touchdowns apiece. Our wide receivers are very important in this offense so i gotta try and land hopefully a three star maybe even a four star wide receiver next season that might be a reach this is my first ever rebuild on college football 25 so i'm kind of pushing the boundaries of what's possible right now and in a senior season jason henderson with eight sacks 10 tfls and 51 tackles man you're a stud dude so our top two sack guys are both out of the league after this dude my kicker ethan sanchez actually a dog though this guy's a beast he hit that 52 yard field goal against south carolina oh my goodness so robert hodges diamond just won national defensive player of the week this guy's a 72 overall senior and he's not even my starting D tackle. The D tackle must be a very important position in this scheme. And I'm currently trying to sign a three star. I would love to sign him. We've got a few players that want to transfer out. Frankly, I'm not huge on persuading any of these guys. Henderson is headed to the NFL. He's projected to go in the second round. Good for you, buddy. We lose our best corner, our best middle linebacker. Our best wide receiver. Oh, this is brutal. I'm not used to this on the Madden rebuilds. I'm gonna try to persuade Koa, and he's decided to stay. Beautiful. Do the same thing for Jordan. It didn't work. They were offering too much money at Georgia. Looks like NC State wants Calvin Zambrano. This is that three-star D tackle I was talking about. But we're their front runner for Chun, Camella, and So, as well as Colton Wayne. It's National Signing Day. We did land some three stars but we lost some guys too. So Jose Treggs, free safety, something huge we were looking for. And I picked up Grant Wilson's future replacement. This is Walker White, a three-star scrambler quarterback out of Little Rock, Arkansas. We missed on a few guys here, even lost Dante Lee to the Purple Pirates. We picked up Colton Wayne, we got Earl So. We did get Zambrano, and I was really looking at him because he's that D tackle I like. And we got Jason Chun. In the first year to pick up this many three and two stars, feel like is really solid. Not only that, but if you take a look at the Old Dominion Monarchs, we are a two-star program now. Although it is a bummer to see no Jason Henderson. Grant Wilson has enough skill points for an upgrade, so we'll juice him up our way. After off-season training, the team's looking a lot better. I've almost maxed out my tactician tree. Five more skill points and it's maxed. I'll go into another and then I'll start taking on another branch. This looks a lot better after year one. We're a B-plus championship contender, B-minus pro potential, uh, but the stadium atmosphere still sucks. We've got no traditions. Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. Our year two schedule includes the Indiana Hoosiers. We got Virginia Tech once again in week three. We take on Liberty. App State's gonna be a big game. 
and we'll face the Raging Cajuns this year. Now, I wanted to make sure that first season was in depth because honestly, I was learning myself. But if I do that for every season, this will be a five hour long video. So I'll try to show you guys the biggest moments and the biggest signings without boring us to death. But we've quickly gone from a 74 overall to a 77 overall. Also, Walker White might have been the best signing we made. He's already a 76 overall as a sophomore. He's got a lot of physical abilities. Grant Wilson will be out of here after this year. This will be an excellent replacement. Calvin Zambrano came out as a 65 overall. I don't have anything to compare this to. I don't know if that's a really good pickup or if that's really bad. Our new corner, Brandon Crutchfield, is looking like a monster though. It was important to me that I got a corner. His dev trait is normal, but he's an 80 overall. He's already got five physical abilities. He just needs to upgrade his stats a little bit to activate them. For example, blanket coverage requires 82 man. He's got 79. I'm excited to see Crutchfield go. Also, these player models are sick. I'm gonna sim to the first AP poll. We've got Indiana and Virginia Tech in these first three games. So I'm worried that if we fall to both, it's gonna be an ugly start to this season. Sunbelt Offensive Player of the Week. Oh no, shoot, I didn't realize how late in the season the first poll was. I was only trying to sim like six games. MM casual moment. Week nine versus James Madison. He went for 377 yards and four touchdowns. And we're four and three, two and one in the Sun Belt, and look who we're playing. It's App State. Well, we have a winning record. We lost to Indiana, we beat Marshall by one, and we lost to Virginia Tech. That was a close game. They're ranked 22 in the nation too. Smack the shit out of Liberty. Smacked Eastern Michigan. We lost to Georgia Southern. We beat James Madison. That's what you get. That left end prospect went to James Madison just to get clapped around. And now it's time to take on App State, who is 20th in the nation. We are third in the Sun Belt East. Tactician is officially maxed out. I could go for strategist. Ooh, firm handshakes. Extra XP for signing a recruit. We're gonna be signing a lot of recruits. I'm gonna try recruiter. 10 skill points to start it out. And I'll upgrade the DB ability. Ab State is a flat 80 overall. Here we go. Come on, Old Dominion. Ooh, I really want to get past App State. And it's 10 to 0 at the end of the first. All right, we got three. We got 10. It's all tied up. Dude, when we beat South Carolina, I kind of thought this was going to be a breeze. I don't know about that anymore. Oh, this is so big. Down by three, it's App State ball. We need a huge stop here. Come on, we're at home, boys. They're ranked. Can we beat a ranked program? This will be our first time beating a ranked team. Two minute warning, we've still got all three timeouts. We kinda gotta get the stop right now. There's a handoff, we knew that was coming. Another handoff, that's fourth and five. I don't think this is field goal range. That's yeah, a punt, that's a pooch punt. My kicker can do it. Is that a punt dot? Is it all right punt? We'll start at the 14. Grant Wilson, it's your senior season, buddy. You gotta beat a ranked team. We only need field goal range to send this into overtime. A touchdown gives us the lead. Grant Wilson is flushed out, but he stands and delivers! <gasps> oh, you're cut, buddy! Who is 14? That was a literal touchdown! And Grant Wilson misses the- No way you just dropped that! Grant Wilson just delivered you a perfect ball. 14, you're cut! Grant Wilson, great ball! That's number nine. It ain't- it ain't 14, I'll tell you that. Clock is ticking. We're in no huddle. Third and five. It's a big conversion. We don't get this, we're taking the field goal. I'd have to imagine. Grant Wilson's got nothing. He's got absolutely nothing. He's sacked. That's the last thing you could do there. Are we in field goal range? Shout out to our kicker though. Our kicker's a dog. This is a 50 yard field goal right here. App State ices him. Let's see if it matters. They ice the kicker. It's a 50 yarder. I saw him hit a 52 against South Carolina. He delivers once again. This guy's a dog. Now it's 16 to 16 and App State's gonna take over here. App State elects for a half draw. I guess they're just conceding into overtime. That's weird to me. With two timeouts, you think they might? Nah, maybe not. Damn, this is getting big yards though. Here's a little overtime rule refresher for everyone. That's actually super clutch. We are at home in a huge Sun Belt game right here. Taking on App State. We'll start out with a handoff to the senior Devin Roche. The biggest conversion of the game, third and eight. Grant Wilson, unloads, cut! But he's not in the end zone. It's a game of inches. There's Devin Roche! Punches it in. That is a huge touchdown right there. What are we doing? Blown coverage, but look at that! Way to fight! Make him earn it! Oh my gosh, I... <laughs> that was actually awesome, the way they dragged him back from that. But I don't know if we can stop App State on the one. We can! We can! Come on, baby! One more time, boys! We got our star D tackle Lowry there in the trenches. You know we're gonna hand it off again. Just send the house. Send the house! Third and goal! App State backed up to the two. It's literal deja vu. This is the same scenario we were in. 
It's another run. It's a stretch. Bodies, bodies, bodies! Fourth and goal! They have to go for it. They need inches, literal inches from App State. It's not even a yard. There's the handoff. One more time, boys! An almost miraculous stop, but App State gets in. Will they take the PAT? They'll take the PAT. We're going to second OT. They're going for it. Fourth and four. Get there! Get there! Get there! Lowry! Our senior D tackle. I think it's Denzel Lowry. I honestly do not know the rules at this point. Can we kick a field goal and just win it now that we've got to stop? Or are we forced to get into the end zone? It doesn't matter! On the first play of second OT, Grant Wilson. He threw up the Heisman and Old Dominion topples the Mountaineers. Let's go! but we get the win over our first ranked opponent in second overtime. Damn, I'm gonna miss Grant Wilson, bro. I'm really gonna miss Grant Wilson. With the losses we have right now, there's no way that we can compete for a national title, which means Grant Wilson won't be here when we do. But wow, what a game. Yeah, and he absolutely earned it. Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week is Denzel Lowry. The Sunbelt Championship. We're taking on UL Monroe, University of Lafayette. I have no idea what team that is. We finished the season at the top of the Sunbelt East at eight and four and six and two in the conference. Up and in the West is Monroe. I do want to see the Heisman watch. Like, are we ever on there? No. It's Keyshawn Buckley, a wide receiver. Thomas Castellanos, a deep drive to left field. Okay. None of you get that. Just kidding. So many of you get that. Garrett Neusmeyer, a quarterback at LSU. Kate Club at Clemson and Haynes King, Georgia Tech. Darn, I was really hoping my boy Grant Wilson would have a shot. So after that game against App State, we smacked the shit out of a sorry ass Arkansas State team. We beat Georgia State for the first time. We got, oh my God, we got dominated by the Raging Cajuns, who are also eight and four. And we smacked a pretty pitiful Coastal Carolina team too. And that takes us to our first Sunbelt Championship. Grant Wilson had another really solid season. It is slightly worse than last season, but still really good. Devin Roche, great season. I mean, a big improvement, but overall, yeah, halfbacks are just not very dominant in this offense. Although as I look across the nation, I think my thoughts are just kind of inflated because of Madden. Because when I look at most programs, running backs are getting 600 yards. I mean, Nebraska here, you got Dante Dowdle with almost a thousand, but let's actually see who in the nation had the most rushing yards as a halfback. Nicholas Singleton, Penn State, a 98 overall running back, had 1,280 yards and 14 touchdowns. So that's kind of what you could expect. The best receiver in the league was Josiah Freeman. The most sacks in the entire nation was six and a half. Really? That is shocking. Jason Henderson had that. Wow. And Miller Moss of USC has the most passing yards. So these are really good things to note in a dynasty. Because obviously USC is a good team, but it also tells you a lot about playbooks. Like USC's playbook, definitely pass dominant. Clemson's playbook, definitely pass dominant. 49 and 6. Yeesh. LSU, I mean, some of these teams are pretty obvious, but. You know, Toledo? John Allen Richter of Toledo? Rocking 4,100 yards. Ryan Ramey is fifth and best corner. Although it doesn't even look like he'll resign because of my coach resign. I have too many Madden terms in my brain. Could we secure our first ever Sunbelt Championship right here? I shouldn't say that. I'm sure maybe at some point Old Dominion's won the Sunbelt Championship, maybe. I don't know the history of this program. Look at the averages here, 475 yards per game. Seven to zero at the, 14 to zero at the end of the first quarter. Come on, baby, give me that. Oh my God, it's a beat down. Mercy rule, 28 to three, now 28, 10. Don't choke it, don't choke it. I saw this happen against Virginia Tech. 28 to 17, jeez, the Sunbelt Championship was a beatdown. They had home field advantage too in front of all their fans. Oh, that's brutal. Look who it is, Grant Wilson. I'm gonna miss you so much, Grant. An easy dub here. Congratulations, you have won the Sun Belt Championship. I know it's nothing crazy, but the fact that they even show you a screen for this and there's like little fireworks does make me very happy. Another Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week for Jerome Carter, the freshman, and an Offensive Player of the Week, why not? I mean, there's only one Sun Belt game this week, so obviously we were gonna get them both, but. Thomas Castellanos, but he doesn't even have a face scan, and he won the Heisman. No, I'm kidding, guys. He does have a face scan. That's actually what he looks like. If you watched Boston College football, you'd know that. 44 touchdowns and one interception is an absurd stat line, though. Ooh, wait a minute. We got the Camellia Bowl taking on Kent State. So in two straight seasons, we do have a bowl game. We lost last season's bowl game. A quick look at our recruiting board. We're in a tight race against our rival App State for three-star Eric Vega. 
Lamarcus Cerency is a halfback. Eventually, we gotta replace Devin Roche, and we are clearly in the lead on him. A two star left guard coming our way. A three star safety coming our way. Probably not gonna win here on Bozier. Lawrence Cole, this is that backup. Oh, wait. I kind of forgot about this. There's position athlete, or technically, like their position is up in the air. I don't fully understand it yet, but Lawrence Cole's a quarterback. I think when I was initially drafting him, I thought he was gonna be a wide receiver, maybe? 6'4, 192, I guess that is a quarterback build, but I'm still honestly learning. But a solid class. We've got multiple three stars coming our way and hopefully a few two stars as well. Bowl game season once again. We fell last year, and these fans have earned it, man. They haven't had a bowl game win since 2016. It's been almost 10 years at this point. They came all the way out last year, saw a loss, and hopefully it's a different story this year. It's another bowl game in Alabama. Kent State starts with three, three of our own. A lot of field goals here today. Let's get in the end zone, boys. 10 to six, 17, 13. Ooh, this is gonna be a good one. I love to be able to come in at the end of the game and see what goes down. It's 20 to 20, 27 to 20. We've got a touchdown lead with two minutes and 30 seconds left. It's third and 11. He gets right through the middle, but it's a screen. No wonder he got through. Roche fought his way, but that's gonna be a punt. There's the two minute warning. Kent State's gonna have a full drive, three timeouts to get in the end zone. Are we gonna go into overtime again? <laughs> Ooh, not a great throw. Now keep in mind, I think the star only indicates one of the best players on that side of the ball, but if your whole team is bad, I don't think a star means nearly as much. It's not like X Factor in that, because every X Factor in is a really good player. Jeez, they are just rifling it down the field right now. First and 10 with a minute 20. They're getting down the field so fast, but that's a sketchy. Third and 10, the Monarchs could come up with a huge stop here. Unloads, dude, great defense. Fourth and 10, boys, for our first bowl game win. This would all but seal it. Fourth and 10, he unloads deep. Defensive pass interference. Oh, that's defensive pass interference. Shoot. Not only that, but it's a 15 yard penalty in college, which is actually gonna give them extra yards because that was only 10 yards on field. No, he threw into double coverage. We did not need to do that. And on the next play, they're gonna pick up 11 instantly. Timeout Kent State. That's a big mistake. He's getting chewed out in film. There's a handoff, but I tell you what, our run defense this year has been really good. Second and goal, they're empty with one timeout left. Big drop back, unloads! No, <laughs> I was about to say, if you let him catch that. Third and goal from the five for the bowl game. Sacked! Is that our freshman D tackle? Is that the freshman D tackle? Didn't get to see the nameplate, but we spent a lot of time. Oh no, it's Denzel Lowry, our stud senior. I didn't recognize him without the star under him. I don't know if he lost the star or if someone else got to be a higher overall than him. But notice there's no star under Lowry. There was last season. Fourth and goal, Lowry's been so good. Do it again, buddy. There's a check down. We're fine with those. On fourth and goal, he breaks the tackle. Oh no, that is a massive mistake with 18 seconds left. You're kidding me. And they're gonna kick the PAT. No way. Oh, that is, that's an embarrassing defensive mistake right there. We had bodies, we had a tackle. You just gotta wrap up. Oh, the Monarchs. Granted, we got 15 seconds and three timeouts, but I have a feeling coach is gonna hand this off and take this into overtime. Yeah, there it is. 27 to 27. I will say our history in overtime games is pretty good. Kent State will start on offense. Honestly, we had them. We had them dead to rights, stopped. We just gotta do it again. There's a handoff, that's not a first. On third and one, it's a speed option and it's beautiful. Grant Wilson, a great way to start it. Grant Wilson, sketch. It's my favorite thing I see out of Old Dominion. Spread everybody out wide, somebody make a play. I didn't know he was gonna be down. Touchdown, Old Dominion. Just like that, we're back in it. It's second overtime, must go for two. And we start on offense again. This would be such a deflating loss because one wrap up tackle and we already had this thing won. Oh, this would not be fun. Look at this, it's gun stack. I didn't even know we had that in the playbook, but it's a freebie. Dude, we are so good in overtime. Wait, wait, Matt, don't say that yet. This two-point conversion is massive. We haven't played defense yet. It's 40 to 34. It's a handoff. We are not a one-game team. I do not like that play call, Coach. They've got to score and get the two-point conversion, or we're going to third OT, and they come out. First and goal, the field closes down. I think the best thing they could do for us here is run the ball. Uh oh I don't like this anymore. There's a check down. He's out of bounds. Oh, oh, caught! Off the tip! How's that bitch? How's that bitch? Just for fun, 
the game's already over, and he's still gonna house it. Let's go! Ryan Ramey, he almost won best defensive back of the year. And no wonder he's our star player on defense. He just ran the score up to 46 on a second OT, tip drill pick six. Holy shit, I'm 80% bricked. I'm literally actually hard right now. Let's go! This is one of those games where if you look at the box score, you think we blew them out. In reality, we go second overtime and pick six in. I also gotta say, man, Old Dominion has some clean ass colorways, bro. These all powder blues with the white helmet. What a sick choice for our first bowl game win since 2016. And that ends our season 10 and four. We win the Sun Belt Championship. We win our bowl game. We almost could be in the college football playoffs next year. That is so aggressive for this being a one-star program, but it's, I guess it's technically possible. A little luck goes a long way though. I don't think a one-star rebuild is ever gonna be this easy for me again. We win the Camellia Bowl. Let's go. I'm also gonna unlock the motivator section of the skill tree. This is really interesting. You get bonus XP for quarterbacks when your quarterbacks are drafted in the top three rounds. I know it sounds kind of weird, but remember when Jason Henderson went in the second round? So if I had, for example, linebackers, I would get bonus XP for all of my linebackers when Jason Henderson was drafted in the top three rounds. It's pretty cool. Not only that, but the second and third trees on this are really, really good. For example, if you get tier four, your quarterback starts the fourth quarter hot in all close games. So I'm going for that next. That is really cool. I definitely like that motivator tree better than the recruiting one. Ryan Ramey, Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Week, baby. So obviously we didn't make the college football playoffs, but if you're wondering, Clemson beat Texas A&M. And I've also noticed that Tulane is like really good in the Sims. I have seen Tulane in the college football playoffs multiple times already. And I really haven't done that much Sim. Our senior tight end, Jalen Butler, was second team All-American. And honestly, bro, our best player this year, Ryan Ramey. He was a one star in high school. Nobody forget that, a one star. He's now an 86 overall. And frankly, on paper, he, he really shouldn't be that good. He just is. He is our second highest overall player now. So if you notice, Denzel Lowry is technically an 84 overall and Ryan Ramey is an 85. So that's why you see the star under Ramey and not Lowry, because that is our best defensive player right there. Our kicker's an 86 overall. I'm telling you, this dude is really good. So while we don't have a superstar standout like Jason Henderson, you can obviously see how much better the team's gotten already through two seasons. We're up to an 80 offense and a 77 defense, and we're so much more well-rounded. And we do, we get the three-star wide receiver, Eric Vega. I've been looking for a standout wide receiver one. I don't know that a three-star is gonna be that, but we'll see how good he is. We also get LaMarcus Surrency, the replacement to Devin Roche eventually. The transfer portal does have some studs too. I'm gonna take a look at this left end, three star. Take a look at Ashton Hollins, a 6'5 wide receiver. And I'll take a peek at David Anderson. It's Denzel Lowry's senior year, so I do want my D tackles. Another huge signing too. Viliami Tanuda. Some of these names are tough, but it's a three star free safety. I grabbed this left guard because he's from Detroit, Michigan. Don't sleep on the one stars. Damian Clinton, welcome buddy. Through the off season, you get some serious coach points. So we've got 40 to spend in motivator. I'm gonna have my quarterback start the fourth quarter hot and close games. Keep in mind, no more Grant Wilson. I think this third year could be a really difficult year. Grant Wilson was really good. And now we gotta put in one of our two three-star quarterbacks. It's gonna be a little weird. The receiving game motivator is so cracked too because if all your wide receivers and tight ends start the fourth quarter hot and close games, that's like four players. Or if I'm in a two tight end, three wide receiver set, that's everybody out there. That's really good. And then the next one I'll be looking for is my offensive line. Not to mention you stay hot through timeouts. You get an off-season training boost. Motivator is a pretty sick skill tree. Preseason Heisman has Nico Iamaleava winning it for Tennessee. I swear, when you guys get your hands on this game and you're playing Dynasty, you are gonna see Nico Iamaleava go off every season and it's gonna frustrate the hell out of you. I promise you that. That dude's a dog. We're in the lead for Jay Rawlings. We're in the lead for Dennis DeMarco. Doesn't look like we're gonna get Rudy Brink or Rashawn Shatley. All right, it is the start of year three. We are still a two-star program. I don't know what it's gonna take to get us up to a three-star, but it was a great off season. We are an 80 overall with an 81 defense. 
We've got a hell of a stretch without a bye week, though. Georgia State right into Virginia Tech, who we have never beat. We now have Ole Miss on the schedule. Then it's the Carolinas, James Madison, Louisiana, App State. I'm crowning them my rival. I don't, I'm just doing it. They're my rival. UConn is now on the schedule. Marshall, Georgia Southern, and South Alabama now on the schedule. So now that we're a two-star program, we technically can attempt to recruit four stars. Landing our first four-star ever would be really cool. Although I feel like I'm wasting hours on this because that's quite the competition. Season three, I'm simming straight to the college football playoff poll. We won't get to see our game against Virginia Tech and Ole Miss, but I'll definitely get to see my game against App State. Oh, I read that wrong. I thought that was the four star. Hey, Jay Rawlings, the three star linebacker, does commit. We are the front runner for the three star right tackle, Doug Proctor. And Larry Hedgecock. I'm sorry, boys. I'm still learning. I thought it was going to sim me through seven games. That is not the case. It simmed me through nine games, where I took a two point loss to the Raging Cajuns, a six point loss to App State, and we lost to UConn. And to close out the season, we'll take on Marshall, who's six and three, Georgia Southern, who's four and four, and South Alabama, also four and four. Five and four is not what I was looking for at this point in the season, but we got to remember, things look a little different around here. Devin Roche is up to an 87 overall. Ryan Ramey is an 87, but no more Grant Wilson. So our starting quarterback now is Walker White. Luckily in our first season, we scouted him. We were able to land the three star, probably due in part to our really solid first season. And he's good, but he's a scrambler, which is probably not the archetype you want for this offense. Probably want a pocket passer. He's got some interesting abilities too. Magician, mobile resistance, option king, extender, and off platform. You know, we're not really running option in this offense. And I don't feel like changing our entire scheme around Walker White quite yet. If he progresses well and becomes a real dog, maybe but we've got other good options colton joseph is a field general look at the deep accuracy on walker white at 68 i almost need to bench him for colton joseph i'm honestly not sure what this is gonna do but i'm not sure that a scrambler quarterback is right for this offense i'm gonna start colton joseph after a five and four start he's slower he has worse short accuracy but he has better medium accuracy and marginally better deep accuracy by 14 attribute points his throw on the run is worse his throw under pressure is worse. Break sack significantly worse. Dude, Walker White has 98 carrying. This guy needs to be at Louisville. That's White Lamar Jackson. I wish I could trade. I wish I could trade him. I, there's no trading. We can max out O-line on Motivator and get started on our DBs. If you max out all of Motivator, every single player on your team will start the fourth quarter hot in close games. That's pretty crazy. All right, we got a home game against a solid Marshall squad. I want to see how this quarterback change plays out. We did anticipate that this would be a tough season without our senior quarterback, Grant Wilson, but I'm hoping we can close it out strong. We get three wins here. We still end the season eight and four. We'll get a mediocre bowl game and move into our fourth year. I don't know much about Marshall. I guess I'm going to find out. Actually, you know what? Frankly, I haven't played a single snap yet. I'd like to play a snap. Wow, look at how shallow this Old Dominion playbook is. You have gun and you have a million formations out of gun. And that is it. There's gun and goal line. Yeah, the scrambler quarterback was not the right call. Colton Joseph is in. This is his first ever start taking on a six and three Marshall team. That's a bold head coaching call. But I'm gonna hammer the ball to Devin Roach, who is the best player on this offense. Ooh, he's got him. Look at that beautiful ball to Roche. 68 deep accuracy. I wish I had seen that sooner. I just hadn't paid attention to it. I saw that he was a good quarterback. I assumed it'd be solid, but that was uh, that was an oversight by me. Can't make that mistake again. Pocket collapses, and you're not a scrim. Let's get a little bit of time in this pocket. Oh, all out blitz. Gotta get that out quick. We got a lot of room, but you are not Devin Roche, and you are not gonna make that shoot. Darn it. Is this another blitz? No, linebackers drop back. There's a small seam for the tight end. Dunbar's got it. Let's not complicate things, gentlemen. That's an 87 overall Old Dominion running back. We're going straight up the middle. I don't want to have a heavy influence. I got my touchdown. Let's get out of here. It's 14 to 14, now 17, 14. Now 21, 27. Damn, Marshall can score. Oh, Marshall can really score. Jeez, jeez, chill out. That might be the most points we've ever had scored on us right there. Also, hello? Who wants to explain to me how Marshall scored one point in the first quarter? 
Did I see that correctly? Did Marshall score the one point safety in the first quarter? We haven't ran into this problem yet, but we're gonna struggle to retain some of these players if we can't win these next two games. Because a lot of our players wanna play for a championship contender. We ain't contending for shit. I'm not winning in the Sun Belt. I'm gonna sim through Georgia Southern and South Alabama. Hopefully those are wins for us. And at seven and five, I don't expect us to have a bowl game, but I don't know, there's a lot of shitty bowl games. You never know. The 2026 Heisman goes to Zion Chris, senior quarterback at LSU, threw for 46 and four. I'm interested to see how our quarterbacks did, especially with that QB switch. Hey, and we do get a bowl game. Take it on the Memphis Tigers in the first responder bowl. Beggars cannot be choosers. Oh, whoa, why am I taking on the 10 and three Memphis Tigers? All right, let's take a look at these season stats. Walker White threw for 2,521 and eight, but look at this. Colton Joseph only played three games, but in those three games, 918 yards, eight touchdowns, zero interceptions. He has a significantly higher QBR. This was the right decision. I'm sorry, Walker White, I love you. This was the right decision. We need a field general back there. Roche had a really, really solid season. He's only a junior, so next year's his senior year. He's gonna be like, a, he's gonna be one of the best backs in the league next year. I have not been doing a lot of keeping track on my wide receivers, I won't lie, but our best wide receiver right now is TJ Lott. 822 yards and 11 touchdowns. Here's Earl So, who we recruited in the first year, who went for 743 and six. This offensive scheme really spreads the ball out though. There's clearly no true wide receiver one. I guess TJ Lott got about 20 more receptions, but still, I mean, 74, 51, 57. Early Newsome, 76 overall. And Deshaun Melvin, a 67, got some solid reps. Quan Dunbar, that tight end, he's good. Defensively, DeAndre Lynch got home four times. Christopher Spencer, three and a half. I need to check in with my roster. Who's the best player on our defense right now? So here's the full roster. Got a solid left end. A very solid right end. D tackles are shallow. I've honestly been trying really hard to like get myself another good D tackle to replace Lowry, and it has not been easy. Zambrano's the guy that I thought was going to be a dog. He's still got a lot of time to develop, but he's only a 68 overall right now. Mario Thompson's looking good. Steven Scott's looking really good, and he's got a good backup. Koa Noatala looks like he's probably the highest overall player on our defense behind Ryan Ramey. Ryan Ramey's our real standout, dude. Look at our DB room, though, because this was like the biggest thing that we sucked at at the start of the year. Ramey's a dog, and we've got three sophomore corners, 80, 81, 83. I'm really proud of us for doing that. Safeties have taken a step up. Strong safety's still a little shallow. And we no longer have... Oh, Sanchez, our insanely good kicker, is gone. I, that actually sucks. We have two freshman kickers. Both of them suck. Jaden Michaels. We got a very athletic kicker. Memphis Tigers have sick helmets. That's about all I know about that program. The first responder bowl. Wow, that is a packed stadium. I guess Memphis did go 10 and three. So they're probably pretty geeked up for this game. And it's a very fair matchup. 80 overall, 80 offense, 81 defense. Memphis starts with seven, now 10. Hey, our kicker. Nice work, buddy. 10 to 10, 17 to 10, quick. 17, 17, we got a, we got a close game here, baby. 24, 27, 34. Damn, how did they jump up like that? We lost our senior quarterback. We had a mid-season QB change. We get a little bit of development under the belt. On our squad though, we're a lot younger than we've ever been. I like our odds for next year. At least, hey, we're still a winning program. Seven and six, that's not the best, but I'll take it. Well, we had a player drafted, just not in the top round. Ryan Ramey, no longer a monarch, man. He was awesome. I really loved him. He got drafted in the seventh round, so best of luck to him. A few of the signings we made this season, Jay Rawlings, left outside linebacker. We got Dennis DeMarco, wide receiver, and Doug Proctor, right tackle. Those are the three stars. We got a three-star fullback. I just thought it would be funny. Honestly, he doesn't have a lot of a role on this team. Denard Boykins, free safety. And we're still waiting for a few decisions. Headed into year four, here's our best players. Roche, now a senior. He's got four physical abilities. He's an 88 overall. Steven Scott's our next best player, middle linebacker. Spencer Dow, the center. Walker White, up to an 82, but I'm still not starting him. I just can't do it. Colton Joseph's now an 81, so he's kind of closing the gap. I'd love to unlock Master Motivator. I need to have five players drafted. So far, we've only had two. So we got to make this a three-star program, though. We're still a two-star. At the start of the season, I'm making the switch. I'm sorry, Walker White. I keep wanting to say Walter White. Jesse, Jesse, we need to cook. We need I'm sorry. The schedule this year includes a season opener against Kentucky. My arch nemesis, Virginia Tech, who I literally can't beat. UConn, who we lost to last year. And then the standard teams, 
and App State in week 10. Holy shit. The year four sim to the first poll just got finished and for the first time, probably in school history, but for the first time in our rebuild, the Old Dominion Monarchs are a top 25 team. We're ranked 17th in the nation, if I see that correctly. We're seven and one, four and oh in the Sun Belt. Who do we lose to? Oh, so we, oh, and look who our next game is. Our next game is against App State, who's five and three. We are seven and one, 20th in the nation. Oh my God, whoa, we started off the season so hot. We beat Kentucky. We beat Virginia Tech. Granted, Virginia Tech does suck this year. They're four and four, but no, nah, okay, Kentucky's four and four too. Okay, so maybe they suck now. FCS Northwest, they got beat. We lost to UConn, who's three and six. Hello? Put up three field goals against UConn. Dropped a 60 burger on Southern Miss. Yikes. Smack Georgia Southern. They are horrible. Barely squeaked past James Madison. They're not bad. And beat South Alabama by two. They're also really solid this year. And to close the season out, we've got App State, Georgia State, Marshall once again. I want my revenge on Marshall. And a two and six Coastal Carolina team. If I close the season out without a loss, I might make the college football playoffs. Yep. 20th. Sorry, I thought I said 17th, but we're not. We're 20th in the top 25. I love how 5 and 3 Ohio State is still 19. 6 and 2 Washington is first in the nation. It's a little goofy. After so much success, it's exciting to look back at our school, though. So we're A minus championship contender, B plus coach stability, and B minus coach prestige. These are pretty hard to get up, though. I mean, what can I even do about academic prestige? Is there anything I can do that? There's no way to improve it. Yeah, it can't be improved at all. I was looking at this four-star tight end, but Akron has kind of jumped in the lead. I'm gonna send the house, see if we can pull him through. Look at this dude. It's Robert Kennan. He's just simply position athlete. I have no idea how this works, but I'm going for him. He's a four-star something. Scouting should tell me more. Oh my gosh, it's blocking. Are you a fullback? Oh no, if he's a fullback, that's not good. I'm sending the house at a four-star fullback. What are we doing in Old Dominion? I gotta switch the offense if we've got two elite fullbacks. For Devin Roche's senior season, I would love to beat App State one more time. At home here, it is a night game. It is a raining night game. Oh, that looks so beautiful. Look at the fans. Remember when the stadium wasn't packed, boys? Remember when no one showed up to the last rain game? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Scoreless through one. App State gets a field goal, then a touchdown. No, dude. Don't let me have the best season ever to fall to App State, please. 16-7, 16-14, 21-16. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Oh, I love playing App State. It's always a good ball game. This stadium should be louder right now though, boys. App State looking for a game-winning drive down by five against 20th ranked Old Dominion. It's a rivalry game too, please. No, it's a big heave to the star receiver. And we got cooked. What a ball. That dude is 6'3 and faster than my DB. Yikes. Absolutely got to go for two. Let's see if they go right back to him. They don't. They go with the wackest two-point conversion I've ever seen. I like this though. I mean, I don't like losing, but it's only a one-point ball game. We got two minutes, all our timeouts. We just got to get in field goal range. Ooh, yikes. Colton Joseph just got back. Jackson Bussey? Joseph is skinny. A 10-yard sack on the opening play, that is no good. Second and 20. Come on, buddy. We need you right now. That's a laser! Wait, don't score! Wait, down the ball! Oh, they're not gonna do it. Honestly, I mean, is that the right call? I guess I don't know. I don't know. He gets in instantly, and yes, we're up a touchdown, and we get the two-point conversion, we're up seven. Maybe that was the right call. But App State's got three timeouts in a minute 19. Yeah, and it's a rain game. I feel like field goals are not a gimme in a rain game. It's a handoff to the senior, Devin Roche. But damn, I need to have a call. I need to have a sit down with our offensive coordinator to stop running the ball on two point conversions. And the ball is back in App State's hand. That was some quick scoring. App State goes down. Huge sack right there. They're going no huddle. Second and 15. Just trying to get up to the line right now. Those wide receivers got to be gassed. As soon as they get set, they're going to snap this. Play action. Do they go back to the star? Dodged a bullet on that one. 22-27. Flushed out again. Another sack. Clock's ticking. App State's not using their timeouts. I guess they're holding them for our next offensive possession. I, I don't know. Fourth and 18. It's desperate times. Laser beam flag. 
where was the roughing the passer? There's a check down. He's got to get out of bounds. He does. Another check down. Got to get out of bounds. He doesn't. That clock's ticking. Timeout App State. Field goal does them no good. They've got 30 seconds, two timeouts, and 50 yards to go. Get home, D-line. Okay, check down. Got to call another timeout. Oh, I wouldn't call that a check down. That was 10 yards. First and 10 here. A short drag. Definitely going to be inbounds. Doesn't get the first down. That's their final timeout. Now App State could be in a little bit of trouble here. They've kind of got to take end zone shots or just pick up this first down. If he gets sacked, if he gets sacked, yeah, sure. 16 seconds, third and one, a touchdown wins it. 16 seconds, get home. Seven, where are you pass rushing to? She went 80 yards past the QB. What are you doing? He just had 20 yards to run. He could have picked up that first. I can't believe what I just saw. Check down, they got the first. This is the final play of the game. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Final play of the game. Check down, get him. Yes. Oh, Dominion. Hangs on. Oh, that was so nerve wracking. I hated that. Dominion hangs on, moves to eight and one. We literally might get a college football playoff berth. I mean, we should. We should go up in the rankings now too after that win. Oscar Villanueva commits. Like I said, we need some quarterbacks because Joseph's a senior, so is Walker. We move up to 19 in the nation, so a slight boost. I don't know if we're gonna get a berth for that. Sadly, we could not beat South Alabama twice this season. We beat them in the regular season, but in the Sun Belt Championship, we lose 49 to 36. That takes us to the Birmingham Bowl, where we'll play Virginia Tech again. Hoping I can get past them this time. This was our best regular season, but we really petered out at the end. We lose to Virginia Tech in our bowl game 38 to 20. And in Colton Joseph's final game as a Monarch, he had 284 yards and a touchdown, but he got sacked four times. So at the end of year four, here's some of the new guys we signed. We got Oscar Villanueva, a two-star field general quarterback, and he may be the key to us getting to the next level, but I'll explain in a second. We got a three-star athlete. Looks like he's probably a tight end or wide receiver. All right, it's season five. We're a two and a half star program. Okay, so we have gone up, but I'm noticing this recurring theme that's been really difficult for us, and it's quarterback. I was hoping Villanueva would be the answer, but he's not very good. Oh, we have a 94 speed, 95 scrambler quarterback though, Lawrence Cole. I did not realize how fast he was. His accuracies are probably, you know what? For a scrambler, his accuracies are not that bad. 85, 84, 75. Well, my concern is I'm just shuffling in and out senior quarterbacks and none of them are good enough to get us to that next level. At some point, I think I got to start a young guy and develop him. Now, Lawrence Cole's not a freshman, he's a sophomore, but that would give him this year, next year, and the year after that to become an absolute dog. He's already got gold tier magician. I think I'm gonna start Lawrence Cole. I think this year and next year are gonna be pretty tough for us. Kind of like, not rebuild, but I don't expect to, to win 11 games. I gotta do something and I'm doing that because it's already been four years. I'm starting Lawrence Cole. He's so fast, holy shit. I did not realize that. Devin Roche is gone in his place is George Burnett who's now an 83 overall, got an 82 overall fullback. And Eric Vega was an absolute monster pickup. So Eric Vega, the three-star wide receiver we recruited, he's a sophomore and he's our best wide receiver. Holy shit, he has 99 speed. Wait, Eric Vega has 99 speed? Our junior league watch him has 96 speed. Yo, we are stacked. Are actually stacked. And Dennis DeMarco does have 94. I'm not even sure how important speed is in Sim. You know, you never know. Our tight ends are weaker than they've ever been. Our starting tight ends is 62 overall. So we definitely gotta draft that. One of our best players on offense is Theo Batchelder, left tackle. And going into year five, here's a full overview of the program. Our best players are two seniors, of course, Holloman and Batchelder. Jason Chun, who we recruited a long time ago, is all the way up to an 84. I haven't had anybody reach Jason Henderson levels, but I still like him. Oh, the two, Judah, corner, Crutchfield, still such a good player for us. And then Vega, the sophomore, that's really good to see. 94 speed, 95 XL quarterback is making me think we should switch our scheme. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look at the season stats. Or no, let's look at, like, I'm gonna look at the national, national rushing stats. All right, I'm looking at national rushing stats. Joshua Douglas has the absolute highest rushing stats for any quarterback. He's on James Madison. Blake Barnett's doing that, and Kansas, geez, he's a beast. Like, I'm thinking about changing our offensive scheme. 
No. Or maybe because he's so fast, maybe he'll take off more. This is a pretty big risk, but I'm just gonna see how this season goes. On our schedule is Virginia, Virginia Tech, App State, Marshall. Slightly different, but more or less, we know what to expect. We've almost maxed out Motivator. I probably won't put anything in Specialists. I don't think that's worth it. Uh, and we're close to getting Master Motivator. We need to get two more players drafted to the NFL. Now for Master Tactician, we need to win 10 top 25 games. We've hardly played in any, so we're pretty far off on that. Now, just in case my plan is an absolute whiff, I am absolutely gonna try and pick up a three-star field general quarterback. Dennis Simon's looking good. Actually, oh geez, he's getting recruited by Clemson, LSU, and Oregon? Yeah, no thanks. I just need a backup plan, and that backup plan is Field General Dennis Simon, three-star. There's also this four-star, DeMar Claybrooks. I don't know that we're gonna get him, but dude, look at this dude. 82 speed, 91 excel, so he is a scrambler again, but look at his accuracies. 84, 80, so long as his deep accuracy is not bad, he could be really good. Year five, we're starting the sophomore over the seniors. It's anarchy in Old Dominion right now. Ooh. Okay, you know what? Did not go too poorly. We're six and three, about to take on Georgia Southern. I'm really interested to see how that quarterback's doing. Ah, okay, good yards. I do not like the interceptions. Keep in mind, he is a scrambler. Does he have rushing yards though? That's what I'm concerned about. See, I feel like I'm just wasting his speed in this offense. I'm switching my offensive playbook to Auburn's spread. It's got Wildcat. My hope is that this utilizes my quarterback's legs more, but I, I really don't know. Let's see how these last few games go with it. I really hope this does not set this program back significantly because we are five years deep. Dude, when God hands you a 94 speed, 95 excel quarterback, you better find a way. Yikes. D plus championship contender is not what you want to see. Torian Cushenberry, a wide receiver, wins the 2028 Heisman. And we've got the famous Idaho Potato Bowl. Shut up. I do not want to play this, bro. Oh, God. We lost those last three games. I switched the offensive scheme, and we go on to lose three straight. Did you at least use your legs a little more? He threw three more interceptions. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. In only three games, he doubled his rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Okay, so it was doing what I wanted it to do. Sort of. wonder how a full season would go with it. I can't give up on it yet. Whether we win this or lose this doesn't matter too much. I'm gonna get us right into next season, his junior year. I'm nervous. We get a three-star middle linebacker, Greg Kenyon. I'd love to see that. It's much easier to grab three stars now, though. I will stay that. We got Sean Perkins, Dennis Simon. So we did get Dennis Simon. So this is our field general kind of backup option if my scrambler QB doesn't work. Got a three-star wide receiver, another three-star corner. We actually got another three-star quarterback, too. But he's out of Juco, he's a junior, so he's not gonna be a freshman like Dennis Simon. And we got a two-star punter, nice. We're also able to unlock the architect skill tree. And players get additional XP for in-game goals. I like that. I would really like Lawrence to be hammering those home. Chance to increase a random skill cap when leveling up, that's huge. And QBs earn an XP bonus for every three-game win streak. Architect is good. It's hard to unlock, but it's good. All right, fair to say season five was our first very rocky season. The first season we didn't go positive. This is in the Sun Belt, people, but I kind of like what we did, man. The best player on this roster is junior Eric Vega, who's an 85 overall with 99 speed, 94 excel. It's a monster, monster prospect. Zambrano, who is now a senior, is our second best player. Afateo, you guys remember him? He's now a senior. And there's Lawrence Cole sitting at a 77 overall. So he is now the highest overall quarterback on this team. Although nice to note, Oscar Villanueva, that field general that we got, his dev trait is impact, which means he develops faster. Dennis Simon is kind of a dud. He's a 64 overall, but we also got Gallopo, who's the improviser. He's a 68 overall. He is star development. Oh, but he's a junior because he came out of Juco. I don't think I can start him. Lawrence Cole's actually star. I didn't even notice that till right now. Lawrence Cole is star dev, which is higher than impact. He develops faster than that. I gotta stick to Lawrence Cole, dude. I think my best chance to really get in the college football playoffs is a really good season here out of Lawrence Cole. And that takes us home. That's my hope. We need a good season here though. We really need a good season here. It's literally the best thing I could see. Six and two. Okay, but granted last season we were six and three. We went on to lose the final three games of the season. But we're taking on App State, my rival. What are the stats looking like for Lawrence Cole? Oh, Lawrence Cole! I believe in you, buddy! Look at how much better he's doing. I mean, mainly the touchdown interception ratio is massive here. 2,090 yards, 18 and two, and on the ground, 
335 and three. Okay, so we're still not getting this ridiculous usage out of him, but he's averaging 4.7 and Lawrence Surrency averaging six. So our ground game has gotten significantly better since switching the offense, but if we don't win anything, it doesn't really matter, right? Eric Vega on 39 receptions has 740 yards. Dude's averaging 19 a catch. And he's got seven touchdowns, but still Earl So is has got 11. Defensively, Denard Boykins has got three interceptions and Zambrano's got six and a half. Damn, we close the season out with three more wins. We're in the Sun Belt Championship again against Louisiana. We're not ranked, but we're nine and three. So in week 13, we beat Texas State. In week 12, we beat James Madison. And in week 11, we beat Coastal Carolina. So it wasn't a very tough end to our season, but hey, we got it. And I love beating App State 31 to 15. I haven't stepped in to watch a game in a while. This will be our first game. You know what? I'm actually gonna play a few reps. I wanna see this playbook, and I'm not gonna lie, I would love to scramble with a 94 speed quarterback. I wanna see what Lawrence Cole is made of, and not only that, but we have Vega, who's got 99 speed, so we've got some serious dual threat going on here. I'm so tempted to just click his button. Oh my God, he's so fast, and he broke the tackle against the star safety in the first play of the game. Eric Vega, 99 speed is so OP. Now granted, if I could, if I was playing every game, I think we'd already have a national championship, but that's not the point. This is gross though. I swear I could just throw that up to Vega literally every single play, couldn't I? But I wanna scramble. Okay, we got double protection over here. Use those legs, Cole. Use those legs, Cole. Oh, I don't, I still don't know if this was the best decision, but I tell you what, man, this is super fun. Cole is hot. We're gonna go play action here. Roll out right. X is so open, but I'll have downfield blockers. Ah, the juke. Good speed, Cole. All right, I've done enough. I already got a freebie touchdown. 14 to seven, 21 seven. Doesn't look like I was needed, to be honest. 28 seven, we're smacking the Cajuns. Oh, this is blowout. Sunbelt Championship. Is this Sunbelt Championship three or two? Guys, when you get to the sixth hour of the rebuild, you do be forgetting. I'm not lying. But hey, 37 to 14, the Sun Belt Championship is back home at Old Dominion. 373 passing yards, five touchdowns. Hey, keep in mind, I only did one of those. Sun Belt Champions, baby. 2029 Heisman is a Notre Dame quarterback. 40 and eight. It's really not that good. It's got nothing on Castellanos. Take it on Northern Illinois Huskies, and I'm back in the 68 Ventures Bowl. History does repeat itself. They're seven and six. This should be a W, honestly. I'm gonna let Lawrence Cole do his thing. I'm not checking in on this one. 10 and four tells me we lost. Mmm. And we take a 28 to 24 loss to the Huskies in the Ventures Bowl. Damn. Hey, it wasn't on Lawrence Cole. 390 and three. This will be the best quarterback we've ever had. Cause Grant Wilson, I think was an 81 going into his senior year. And we've still got off-season training. He may end up being an 83, 84. Let's look at the full season stats. Cole almost hit 4,000, 35 and three. That, you had to be on Heisman watch for that, right? Or no, because it's including the championship in the bowl game and Heisman's after that, isn't it? Let's take a look at the award winners. No, he actually got really close. Lawrence Cole was sixth in player of the year and Earl So was ninth over Eric Vega. Fourth in best quarterback. Damn, he really could have done it. TCU sophomores up there, yikes. Maybe that TCU offensive scheme is really good for your scrambling quarterback. All right, it's the off season. Time to add some points to architect. I'm gonna add some receiver points here. I'll tell you one thing right now, this is a hell of a lot harder than Madden franchise. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, headed into year seven. Here's the lineup. Yo, Greg Kenyon's our third best player. He's a freshman. I don't know if that's good or bad. This team is led solely by Lawrence Cole and Eric Vega. My life is on the line with these two. And frankly, we just reverted to a two-star program. I think that was from our six and six season, not last season. But if we can string together a really good season here, I'm hoping we can go up to hopefully a three-star and then land some five-star prospects. That's what's gonna put this team back where it needs to be. Cause we're not, we're not gonna win something huge this season. This is also one of the easiest schedules I've ever seen us have. We have Army, Coastal Carolina, ECU, Virginia Tech, then App State, Marshall, Georgia State. The only powerhouse that we play is West Virginia. And that's their preseason ranking. I like how this looks. We're in, we're in the year 2030. Hey, a little three-star commit, Tremaine John. Also boys, I wanna apologize. This is a huge video. It's really hard for me to show everything. Please let me know what you wanna see more of and less of. We're, we're out of work in progress right now.
Oh, yes, we're ranked again. Okay, so it kind of worked. This is the highest we've ever been ranked. We're 16th in the nation. And putting in our sophomore quarterback, losing some games then has made him a stud in his senior year. And now I just got to hope that we can become a three-star program after this season. We are seven and one right now, but this season is not over. Lawrence Cole's having a excellent season once again. 21-40, 19 touchdowns, four interceptions. And he's got 259 on the ground and three touchdowns. Still, I still want to use him more than this, but I got to figure out playbooks first. Certain season's having an okay season. Looks like the Sean Perkins is getting a lot of reps. DeMarco, oh, Vega. Eric Vega is like, this is wasted talent right here. He's wide receiver one and slot wide receiver. I don't know why he's not getting more targets. His rack yards are monstrous for how many receptions he has. He's just, I don't know. Let me go into the depth chart and ensure that he's where he's supposed to be. Okay, he's wide receiver one. Oh, bingo. I don't know how this dude is not the starting slot wide receiver, but let's make sure he is now. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of wasted potential right there. Our one loss of the season was to number four ranked West Virginia. So they ended up being incredible. Uh, we lost 20 to 10. We put up a great fight against the fourth best team in the nation. The rest of my schedule is a cakewalk. Got a three-star tight end to commit to Rel Westbrook. Ty Toon, he's a local guy. He's in Virginia. Greg Kenyon, the freshman. He's going to be a monster. Greg Kenyon could end up being our first 90-plus overall. Mike Claiborne at TCU wins Heisman. Okay, they're doing something right at TCU. Yeah, I'm back in the bowl. Get me out of the Ventures Bowl. Is this a good bowl game? Or is this what I get because I'm in the Sun Belt? Because we're 14th in the nation. I keep getting the damn Ventures Bowl. We're 11 and 2, so, but we're 8 0 in the Sun Belt. So I think I lost the Sun Belt Championship. 7 and 5 Bowling Green should be an easy game for us. Yay, three star punter. 68 Ventures Bowl winner. I'm going to have more 68 Ventures Bowls than any program in history. All right, we end the season 12 and 2, 15th in the nation. That puts us right in there with Texas Tech and Tulane. Above Tennessee, above Auburn, and Lawrence Cole in his final year. Ends with five physical abilities, 34 and 7, 3,680 yards. It's an awesome season, man. 500 on the ground and five touchdowns on the ground as well. And Vega, okay, once I moved into slot wide receiver, started to go absolutely off. I wish I had done this whole season. That was a big mistake that I made. And he's gone now too. Damn, I just lost so much talent. No, Eric Vega, dude, I'm gonna miss you so much. And then more points into Architect in the off season. We're a pretty damn well-rounded coach. I've got a lot in Motivator, a lot in Tactician. I'm working on Architect and we're B plus prestige. Recruiter in hindsight might've been a little more important but we can't even upgrade it right now because I have to sign two top five recruiting classes. Are you serious? I'm Old Dominion, bro. I'm really scared to look at our roster. Like, I actually don't even want to. Best players on the squad are Denard Boykins, Alan Dixon. There's our sophomore, Kenyon. But look, there's a couple sophomores up here. That's really good to see. Greg Kenyon, Adrian Reeves, Kenya Vilder. Kenyon is going to be a monster. I'm really excited to see him progress. Unfortunately, he is normal dev trait. So I don't know if he'll get to a 90, but we'll see. We're a two and a half star again, so not quite where I wanted to be. And here's our quarterback situation. Paul Johnson is technically the starter and he's no bueno. Neither is Gallopo. We've got a 74 overall sophomore field general, but then I'd be switching back to Viren Shu and a freshman improviser. Villanueva is now a junior. Gallopo is probably our best option. gallopo has got the best stats, most well-rounded. I think we start Gallopo and try to recruit a monster quarterback. We have to throw everything at recruiting a amazing quarterback so that we can have success and really win something. Logan Bowling looks like he's the guy to go for. He's the highest rank that I can go for. He doesn't have too much influence right now. We'll scout him up. Deep accuracy's okay. Short accuracy's solid. We already see his medium. I am sending the house at this dude. Is this year seven or is this year eight? Dude, I don't even remember. And our first game's against Oregon. Why is my first game against Oregon? Oh my God, no. Dude, I'm trying to recruit Logan Bowling right now. All right, Logan Bowling. We are currently at the top of his list. Kennesaw State's going for him. I don't see them getting in, but Penn State, West Virginia are looking. I I've already thrown everything I can at him. I'll have to schedule a visit. When he narrows down his top five, I'll have to schedule a visit in a must-win game. Oh, I need you, buddy. I don't even know if he's gonna be good. I just, I'm hoping. Starting quarterbacks, Emmanuel Gallup is the Juco guy we grabbed. Our quarterbacks have never been worse. 
but our overall has never been better. We've got really good depth at every other position. Good hatbacks, solid wide receivers, nothing crazy, but solid. And defense has some great players all over. Denard Boykins, solid corner depth. And I tell you what, Old Dominion's always got some good linebackers. That's always been true for us. D-tackles are okay. D-line's looking good. And our O-line is honestly might be our strongest point on this entire team. Everybody's an 82 plus. Craig Bueller. That being said, I'm just trying to get out of this season with a great recruiting class and a good enough record that we don't lose our program status. We were a two and a half star a few years ago, then we lost it back to a two star. And we're two and a half stars right now. And that right there is exactly what I wanted to see. Logan Bowling. This is the three-star quarterback we were looking at. It was the highest ranked quarterback we could even attain. So there's no guarantee that he's good, but he's the best case scenario. I'm hoping this could be the answer to our problems. Also, here's a four-star free safety, Barry Blunt. I'm hoping this can be our first ever four-star. We're low-key kind of close on this four-star. Notre Dame's in front of us, but until he narrows down his top five, we can't schedule a visit. And this is definitely our best recruiting class so far. We are consistently landing three stars, no two stars, no one stars, only solid guys. Deshaun Perkins, our sophomore, has been very consistently winning awards. 11 receptions, 207 yards, three touchdowns. I moved him to slot wide receiver, and similar to Madden, that gets you a lot of targets. The 2031 Heisman was Penn State's quarterback, DJ Tiffin. And we've got the first responder bowl, taking on Tulane, and Tulane's usually really good in these sims, so let's find out. I'm excited to play a new team. Now, I'm not gonna lie. This is my first time looking at it, because I've been so focused on recruiting, and I kind of put the season on autopilot, we still did really good. We're 19th in the nation. We're 9-3, and 7-1 and one in the Sun Belt. Our only losses were Georgia State, which is actually a pretty good program. Lost to Virginia Tech, who went 4-8. and eight. That's an ugly loss. And I assume we lost to Oregon. Yeah, 7th in the nation. Oregon smacked us. 45-14. So those are our three losses on the season. Barry Blunt committed to Notre Dame. Shoot! We were really up there, though. Look at this. I mean, look at the competition. Notre Dame, Penn State, West Virginia. We were the second in line. We we're very close to getting a four-star. We lost to Tulane in the first responder bowl. But overall, for a season that I wasn't paying a lot of attention to, nine and four with our Juco quarterback. Gallupo threw for 3,200 yards, 33 and nine. So uh, that Clemson offense, or was it Auburn? Regardless, it's a good offense. I have dementia. Mike Bayless had a nine touchdown season. Doug Perkins. This might be the first time I've seen one of our receivers go over 1,000. Doug Perkins for 1,000 and 12 touchdowns. Tyler Algier's younger brother, DeMarco Algier, or is it, it's Algier, right? Whatever, 700 yards, 10 touchdowns. Guys, they don't pay me to pronounce stuff, all right? Greg Kenyon with four TFLs, half a sack and an interception. And Andres Grudadaria, hell of a name. Our junior corner with three interceptions. Yo, and Norman Podlesny, 11 sacks. And Landon Evenson, the power rusher left end junior, gets seven and a half. Good seasons for all of them. So it's National Signing Day. Let's talk about the three stars we landed. We got John Kumaro, halfback. Frederick Swartz, athlete. But it looks like he's an edge rusher. Doug Basley is a quarterback field general. So we have two three-star field general quarterbacks. That's good. We've got, of course, Logan Bowling. I am most high on Logan Bowling. I think this guy's gonna be a monster. That's my hope. We got Jadarius, right outside linebacker, Silvestro. It was a good recruiting class for us. We got beat out on a good amount of guys. You can see a rough patch here. But Sean Schroeder, and honestly, I got my ass whooped everywhere else. We did land a lot of three stars, but we didn't land as many players as we would have wanted to. And that is exactly what I wanted to see going into this season. Not only do we have the highest overall that we've ever had, but we remain a two and a half star program. So this is where I think the flip switches. That's my hope. Ooh. And I am incredibly sad to say that our freshman Logan Bowling looks like shit right now. Although it's a good thing we got Doug Basley, who looks a little bit better than him, but actually the best quarterback we drafted was Sean Schroeder, the athlete position. He's a scrambler with 93 speed, 90 excel. I'm getting deja vu a little bit here. His deep accuracy is a little ugly, but his short and mid are pretty good. I think our starter this year, though, is going to be Gregory McChristopher. He is a sophomore, and he has the best rounded accuracies. Uh, my issue with a lot of these quarterbacks is look at the deep accuracies on so many of these guys. 71, 79, 74, 79, 72, 65. Dude, that is not going to cut it. McChristopher's got the best accuracies out of everybody, but he's only a 74 overall with 86, 84, 90, and he's a sophomore. But Christopher, you're going to start, and hopefully Bagley, Bowling, um, Sean Schroeder, these guys, 
In fact, as I say that, I'm gonna redshirt these dudes. I'm gonna redshirt Schroeder, Badgley, and Bowling, just in case, just let them develop for the whole year. Taking a look at the whole roster though, we built some serious depth. We've got another stud halfback, Taylor Perez, a white receiving back, little Chris McCaffrey. Really good offensive line, look at that. Dixon, Adrian Reeves, Craig Bueller. Grunadaria, Hawkins, Tyree Salter. We've got another good kicker, boys. You know, I love that. And then at the wide receiver position, I'm assuming Perkins, yeah, Perkins definitely went up because he had a really good season. Uh, and we've got a freshman, Kristen Combs, 96 speed. I apologize, guys. I recruit these players and, and I don't always go check all of their stats until the next season, you know, when they actually play. But I love to see this. Yeah, we have good wide receiver depth for the foreseeable future because I got two really good juniors and a stud freshman. That's really good. I'm actually gonna move Kristen Combs to my slot wide receiver. 96 speed on a slot wide receiver? It's gonna be a big season for him. I also apologize, I had no idea how long this would take. I did not think we'd be in the year 2032 as a two and a half star. I'm not gonna show nearly as many games until I get this program to where I really think we can win something big. This season though, we've got Colorado State, SMU. Wow, this may be the easiest schedule we've ever had. SMU is the only big program playing and they're not ranked. This is literally the easiest season we've ever had. And we're the best we've ever been. Another nine and three season. And one of my losses actually came to James Madison. Yikes. But we beat Marshall, beat Arkansas State, beat Georgia Southern. See, the thing is like, we're having no issue just smacking around the Sun Belt. I take that back. We actually lost to Monroe too. But we're kind of just like beating down on these not so great programs. And then when it comes to playing a, you know, quote unquote, real team, like SMU, we keep losing. So if I can't get past SMU or Oregon, I'm never gonna have a chance in the college football playoffs. We did beat a nine and three Colorado State team though. So we're in the Sun Belt Championship once again, but we are not a ranked program this time around. Another Sun Belt Championship under our belt. This is making me think I should switch conferences, honestly. Gregory McChristopher. Putting the sophomore in was the right call. This is a great season. I gotta give it up for the touchdown and interception ratios that we are consistently getting in this offense. I feel like if we were in a tough conference, this would go up a lot. Obviously, it's not like we're playing five-star corners every week, but dude, I'm, we're consistently hitting excellent numbers. This was the worst halfback year I think we've ever had, dude. But he got in the end zone two times. As a starting 86 overall back, that's some wasted talent. I'm not gonna lie. Sergio Ficken led our squad. Kristen Combs, though, that 96 speed uh, freshman, Got to the end zone 12 times. And Deshaun Perkins got eight. You know, we don't have good tight ends, but frankly, we don't use them that much. He got 39 targets, so I'm over it. And defensively, dude, I love seeing Greg Kenyon right at the top. Our stud junior middle linebacker, 86 tackles, three TFLs, got one interception, and we got four out of George Hawkins, our junior corner. Didn't nearly get to the quarterback as much this year, though. Six and a half sacks out of Evenson, five out of Swift, and look at Kenya Vildor. Probably the best player on this program. Uh, and he's only a junior. I thought he was a senior. Kenya Vildor. He's technically a 92, but he's really an 88. He's just boosted by four. He's got star dev trait. And honestly, I'm shocked he doesn't have more abilities, but he's got takedown, improved sack attempts, and grip breaker. Boost to lateral sheds on runs. Kenya Vildor. Once again, a solid three-star class. It was a 10 and four season. We went six and two in the Sun Belt, and we lost our bowl game. Picked up Tommy Edmond, Corey Washington. It's really just good to see that we are consistently getting three stars. I'm learning very quickly that this is not Madden and you cannot turn a program around in one or two or even three years. It has been a slow climb up a hill to even get us where we are right now. In year nine, we have three absolute standout seniors. Kenya Vildor, Adrian Reeves, and Marcus Ellington. Once again, you're seeing that theme of offensive line. Vildor being our best player is exciting though. Power rusher senior. 6'3", 246. Our best sophomore is a D tackle. And noticing in that top 10 is our junior now quarterback, Gregory McChristopher, up to an 82 overall. This dude is developing fast. He's got impact dev trait, which isn't as high as you'd want, but he's got gold pull down and he's got silver sleight of hand. All right, it is literally year nine. It's 2033. Our first game is against Army. I've got a few four stars on the board, like Avery Wade here. I definitely want a stud to replace Kenya Vildor. A win in week one versus Army, and we take on the FCS Midwest. For anyone confused, they couldn't get literally every program, so you have these like default programs like FCS West, FCS Midwest, and they're usually not very good, and that's why we're 2-0. Beautiful. Now we got a bye week. 
Ooh, a little rivalry game taking on two and one Liberty. I haven't seen the team play in a minute. We've got a great quarterback situation because McChristopher is a junior. Wide receivers are in a great spot too with Kristen Combs now the outright starter. Old Dominion versus Liberty. Our overall did go down from last season though. If we can hang on to this lead, if, that's a big if. Oh my God. <laughs> Second and 10 here, McChristopher. Ooh, is that caught? That was caught. Yeah, this is college, you only need one foot. First and 10, so we're in field goal range. We should almost just be in shoe clock, yep. There's a handoff, and that's no longer Taylor Perez. That's Scotty Sanders in the backfield, who is nowhere near as good as Perez, but hey, we're not a good run game team. We have never been a good run game team. Despite having a good O-line, it's more of a pass blocking O-line. Third and nine, we're gonna hand it off again. I'm a little, I guess I'm not shocked because we are chewing clock, but we do have a good kicker. So this should be just absolute butter. Only concern, Liberty's got all three timeouts. That's why I kind of thought we might go for the first time. That's kind of why I thought we'd go for the first down. We are trying to end the game. Ooh, ethnically ambiguous kicker. 52 seconds in a two point lead is honestly scary. But hey, if you want to waste some time on kickoff, I'm fine with that. All Liberty needs is field goal range to win this game. Let's see how the defense steps up. Kenya Vildor, I need you to get home. But we do love a check down. And there's a quick burnt timeout from Liberty. Second and nine, get home boys, get home. No way. Who did he just chuck that shit to? <gasps> Good defense. Oh my God, if that was a better ball, he had him cooked by five yards. Third and nine with 36 seconds. Holy shit. That was so big. And whenever he throws the ball like that, I know somebody's open. No, we're running a 4-2-5. We got five DBs back there. How did we just get Hail Mary on twice? Old Dominion. That's how we go undefeated this season, man. Wait a minute. Why am I saying that? Like we don't have three timeouts and sophomore, no, junior Gregory McChristopher. This game is not over. We do need a touchdown though. So if you throw that stupid dog shit shut down again, dude, I'm gonna bench your ass. Are you out of your mind and you're running no huddle with three timeouts? Are you smoking dick? Are you setting up for- That was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You just wasted 14 seconds to call a timeout and now we're in Hail Mary. This game's over. This game's over. Second, no. Don't you dare. Okay, that would have been the sickest thing ever if he has called that puppy. Timeout with five seconds. That was actually a really big pickup, and now it's truly Hail Mary. Do you believe in miracles, Old Dominion? Oh! Oh my God! Old Dominion on the Hail Mary! Tip drill! Touchdown! The Monarchs are 3 0! This is on the road! This is in Liberty! Tip drill! Hail Mary to Kristen Combs, the sophomore! I can't believe what I just fucking watched. I cannot believe what I just fucking watched. No way! Oh, yeah, that's nice for your stats, buddy. You just got 90 yards and a tutty at the end. No way! Guys, I know this is a long video, but if you made it this far, you witnessed a historic Kristen Combs touchdown. If we can win like that, we can win every game this season. Oh my God! That was one of the coolest things I've ever witnessed. We're 3-0, baby. Oh, we're taking on the Ohio Bobcats at home. My road to glory squad. That was definitely one of the coolest things I've ever got to see. <laughs> Look at that! The rest of the season went beautifully. Number 15, Old Dominion, we're 11 and one. This is our best season up to this point. Where's our one loss? We beat the shit out of Coastal Carolina. We own that team. Beat the Cajuns. We beat Georgia State. I thought the team we lost to. Ah, uh, we lost to Marshall, but Marshall is ranked and they're also 11 and one. Oh no, no way. Marshall's in the Sunbelt East, which means I'm not gonna get to play in the Sunbelt Championship this year, which is so depressing because nine and three Southern Miss is gonna play in it, but not 11 and one Old Dominion. Damn. Presumably we get a gnarly bowl game though. Hopefully it's not the 68 Ventures Bowl. Please don't be the 68 Ventures Bowl. Please don't be the 68 Ventures Bowl. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I've seen TCU a lot on this. I'm, I'm tempted to, to use their offense. 17 touchdowns. The Heisman Trophy winner is a wide receiver. It's very hard to do. It's the first responder bowl. It, is it like because I'm in the Sun Belt, I only have access to certain bowls or just they aren't respecting me because I'm in the Sun Belt? I don't know. Take it on FAU, Florida Atlantic. Hey, first responder bowl winner. It's been a minute since we won a bowl game. We recently won the Sun Belt, but not our bowl games. We were dropping our bowl games last couple years. 12 and one this season. That is absolutely our best season. That's not gonna get me a, that's not gonna get me a playoff berth because we're 17th in the nation and we lost to the only ranked team we played, we lost to. So we're, that's never gonna get us in the college football. 
playoffs. Well, after a spectacular 12 and one season, National Signing Day looks really good for us. Once again, it's a bunch of three stars, but dude, I'm still a two and a half star program. And we're like, I mean, we're actually nasty. I'm gonna sim it the next season to see if that makes me a three star. There's either something I'm not understanding, or honestly, I think I do have to switch conferences. I don't think I can stay in the Sun Belt. I honestly don't get it, dude. We just went 12 and one. We had one loss the entire season. We won our bowl game. The previous season, we were 10 and two. I'm still two and a half stars. I think I'm gonna switch my conference and see what happens. The best player on the entire roster now, though, as a senior, Gregory McChristopher. It's really nice to have your best player be your quarterback. He's got some nasty abilities now too, so I'm really happy to see that. Second best player is Keegan Hyde, junior D tackle, and our third best player is a sophomore tackle. Sinalo Rao, left outside linebacker as a junior, is our fourth best. You got Josh Troop, so once again, it's our linebackers looking great. And uh, there's Kristen Combs, the hometown hero. Kristen Combs caught the insane Hail Mary. I love this dude. On the schedule this season, we have ranked West Virginia. So hey, if we can get a ranked win, maybe that'll move the needle. My concern is this is McChristopher's last season and I actually can't change conferences right now. I think you can only do that in the off season since obviously my schedule's already set. So this will be my last, oh my God, and we have Notre Dame. This will be my last season in the Sun Belt. And it's McChristopher's senior year. So let's go out with a bang. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Maybe I don't need to leave the Sun Belt. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, am I to understand that I, I'm now a three-star program, so I must have beat a ranked team, but we're not even ranked. Oh, because I play Notre Dame. Notre Dame definitely shit on us. But I have to assume we beat West Virginia. If we're 12 and two and we rank, like we have a star up. All right, hold up. Let me see this Sun Belt here. I mean, they're scheduling me good games. They really are. We beat, damn, we actually whooped on West Virginia. Low key though, their ranking must have been trash because they went four and eight. So, hey, whatever, it worked in our favor. Uh, week 10 was Notre Dame? Oh, yay. So at the time that we played Notre Dame, we were 13th in the nation, and Notre Dame was 14. And they kind of exposed us, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, not the best look for Old Dominion. We won the Sun Belt Championship, and we won our bowl game. We beat Boston College in the Birmingham Bowl. Who the hell is my other loss to? Who did I lose to? Beat West Virginia, beat Northern Illinois. No, I did not. Dog, we beat West Virginia. We won the Sun Belt Championship in our bowl game, and we fell to the fucking default Sharks. We fell to FCS Northwest. That's funny. That's funny. Gregory McChristopher, I'm not even gonna lie, in his senior year, like, he played better as a junior and as a sophomore. This is not his best season. I mean, the competition was up this year, I guess, with West Virginia and Notre Dame, but still, that's not a very good season for him. Imani Okalanwin, sorry if I butchered that, but 661 and 80 is a good season. Corbin Zambrano, a late relative to Calvin Zambrano, hopefully, probably not, he's kind of white. Um, we spread the wealth, there was no standout though. Kristen Combs in his junior year, kind of expected more. Still a stud though, nine touchdowns, 700 yards, nothing to complain about. And defensively, the best pass rushing season we've ever had. Keegan Hyde in his junior year, goes for 13 sacks, and Clifton Folk, also a junior, once again, this 4-2-5 defense, the D tackles are so, so good. They're so important. We've got two stud D tackles who combined for 25 and a half sacks. That's crazy. Nice work. Dude, I should have rebuilt like, I should have rebuilt like a good team. This was, <laughs> why did I do this to myself? Hey, we end the season with our highest ranking ever at 13th in the nation. Still not enough for the college football playoffs, but National Signing Day should look really nice for us. Uh, Tommy Gooch, shut up. He committed. Uh, we've got Gooch, we've got Baggett, we've got Toomer. It's quite the class here. I don't think you get any points for a funny recruiting class, but dude, we landed our first 13 guys, which we haven't done in a long time. Nice. I still can't land a four star to save my life though, but hey, now we're truly a three star program. It should not be difficult this upcoming season. 10 years later, literally, we finally have a significant amount of four stars on our board that we could realistically sign. Calvin Connolly, Jarek Stanford, Carl Proctor, and John Russo locked me out. Have, have fun at Virginia Tech, bud. Golly. Miles on Muzurike, Jimmy Valerio, Kendrick Perkins. Okay, I lied, but still, that'd be funny. Keegan Hyde's now the best player on the roster. Followed up by Slow Rao, Sidney Bakhtiari, Tommy Edmond, Percy Tangelo. We keep getting the star running backs, even though we don't really use them that much. I find that very interesting. And for the first time in a bit, we've got a pretty shallow quarterback situation. I have two really fast quarterbacks again, Schroeder and uh, Casey Griffin. But once again, I gotta look at the accuracies. Do we go Badgley or Schroeder? I think I am gonna go Schroeder. 
Yeah, we'll go Schroeder. He's an option quarterback, but his accuracies aren't bad. And he's fast, dude. 93 speed, 90 excel. Remember a couple years ago, we redshirted him for this very reason, and it worked out great because he'd be a senior right now if not. So we got two solid years with Schroeder. I'm not going to redshirt Griffin because he's scrambler too. Jeff Roy. I just, I think I honestly need to recruit a good quarterback because I don't like our quarterback room right now. We're at 85 overall though. Now that we're a three-star program, I like that we are still in the Sun Belt because when I look at the schedule, so many of these games are almost free wins. Oh, we play Michigan State. Nice. I know it's been a while since I graduated, but I went to Michigan State, y'all. I think some people really don't know that. Washington State will be a tough game. Michigan State will be a relatively tough game. Southeast, Bowling Green, Southern Miss, Georgia Southern, James Madison, South Alabama. These have been gimmies. App State can be tough. Georgia State can be tough. Marshall can be tough. Coastal Carolina. I don't think I've literally ever lost to Coastal Carolina. Like, ever. So let's have another good season. 10 and 2, baby. Another excellent season. Dominated the Sun Belt. Dude, look at our overall. Isn't that insane to see? Like, I know it's been 11 years, but it is so cool to see. I mean, we're a real program right now. 21st in the nation, Sun Belt Championship. I'm gonna play a few reps. You do kind of feel like a powerhouse when you just win the conference championship year after year. Old Dominion is the team to beat the Sun Belt. There is no doubt about that. I know that's kind of a cope because it is the Sun Belt, but like, come on. It's like being the best football team in your state, but you're like division five. Ooh. My halfback O'Conlowin is running some routes out there. Can't say I'm mad about it. Now keep in mind, Schroeder has 93 speed. He's giving a small, a small feeling of Lawrence Cole, our absolute speed demon quarterback from years past. But really our standout on offense is our running back and he is wide open in the flats. Let's use O'Conlowin. Oh, yikes. We don't have Eric Vega either. Man, I miss Eric Vega, bro. Just chucking up a heater. There's a beautiful red zone scissor route out of O'Conlowin. Sorry, that is a that is a really tough last name. O'Conlowin, we can use our legs. Don't forget, that's a star right end. But I'm fast. I'm very fast. Play action double post. What do we got here? Scramble once again. I'm going to slide on this one. I don't want to take a hit from that Troy middle linebacker. What do we think, Schroeder? Let's go with the weird camera angle here. It's actually, it's actually a viable camera angle. Ooh, is that not a touchdown? Shit! Ah! Oh, it wasn't even really that close. I'm like a yard and a half away. Schroeder's hot. I'm gonna go to our stud running back. We're gonna make it way too easy. Let's go Old Dominion. They got me back on offense here. It's third and inches. Oh, are you kidding me? This is the freest play call of all time. I have never seen a team stop us for a single yard. Like if I need an inch, we're getting it. Let's put up a touchdown here. McGahee's looking hot. Schroeder and a condom. Dude, everybody's big balling right now. And there's another takeoff and a great downfield block. I think the second and three. This play is nasty. Play action, double post. Really like this one. Let's see how it looks here. Okay, we got a double team on the right side. I'm gonna scramble. I almost could have thrown that to X, but when your quarterback has 93 speed, you're doing him no justice if you're not taking off. There's a delayed blitz, but there's no blitzer on this edge. And Schroeder. Yeah, talk your shit, Schroeder. Or is it Schroeder, like Dennis Schroeder? Whatever. Well, I did my job on offense, and my team did their job on defense so far. A 14-0 lead. If we lose this in the sim, we 1,000% deserve to lose. But it looks like the Trojans are having a really bad day. It's the Troy Trojans, right? Whatever. All I know is we win ball games, baby. Another Sun Belt Championship. Oh, I feel like prime Conor McGregor, dude. We're just racking up the belts. I'm Irish, okay? I'll be biased. I feel like Khabib. Shut up. 28 to 17. That's a 7-0 in the Sun Belt. Two losses this season, but I'm over it. Hey, Lego. Yeah, it's actually year 11, I take it back. Ooh, Schroeder's up to an 81 overall, and uh, he'll be a senior next year. Strung together a great season, 30 and seven, 3,200. Definitely found a playbook I love, and dude, sending off his senior season with a bang, 750 and 11. Schroeder, okay, wow. Look at how much he took off this season. 613 yards and eight touchdowns on the ground. That's the most we've seen in a long time. Uh, Tremaine John, the 73 overall at 10 tutties. McGee's at 83 overall. Kristen Combs, okay, how Kristen Combs is not getting the ball more is a little frustrating, but that's okay. Defensively, we knew Keegan Hyde was gonna be a baller and same with Clifton Folk. Dude, there's something in the water at TCU. 2035 Heisman. This is year 11, that's insane. Oh my God, oh my God. Remember at the start of this rebuild? The last bowl game that Old Dominion had won was the Bahamas Bowl in 2016. It's now 2035, 19 years later, we get the Bahamas Bowl again. Oh, we gotta do this one for the nostalgia. We gotta win it. It's also against a dog shit Middle Tennessee State team. Seven and six, they were five and three. Whatever, dude, whatever. Give me the, what was I thinking, dude? Talking shit about Middle Tennessee State? We lost by a touchdown.
I mean, I guess they were there for a reason, right? The year is 2036. I can't believe I just said that out loud. Oh, uh, we have a bye week. We play the astronauts and then we have a bye week and a bye week. Whoever made my schedule can get fucked. And then I have, oh my God. Okay, I will say there's not a single good program on this schedule. We've yet to go undefeated. We're three stars. We went from one star to a three star in 12 years. I like this schedule a lot. <laughs> Yo! Dude, the first raw 90 plus that we've had is a right tackle, Tommy Edmond. He's an absolute stud. He's got great physical abilities. He was a three star in high school and he's got a star dev trait. And honestly, that pairs pretty well with Sean Schroeder. Sean Schroeder, of course, a right-handed scrambling quarterback. So he'll be rolling out to the tackle, who's actually upgraded his speed now to 95. Oh shit, I didn't think this dude was good. Yo, wait a minute. Jeff Roy, development trait elite. I've never seen this before. Jeff Roy, elite dev trait. He's already a 79 overall as a freshman. Oh my God. I picked this dude up on a whim just to grab depth. I did not think he was cracked like this. That is a one big important thing that I have not been checking is everyone's dev trade. Elite dev trade is develops at the fastest rate. I almost got to start him. You know what's crazy is Sean Schroeder is only marginally better than him. He's better by two overalls. Roy has 96 medium accuracy and better deep accuracy. Oh my God, I'm starting Jeff Roy, dude. This dude's gonna be a 90 overall. Oh my God, these rebuilds are so hard. Holy shit, Jeff Roy, are you gonna finally take me to the college football playoffs? Are you gonna do it, bro? Tell me you're gonna do it, Jeff. Is that the answer? We don't have the best wide receivers for Jeff, but actually I take that back, dude. 82, 82, 83, look at Tommy Gooch. Tommy Gooch, 99 speed, the Gooch is loose. All right, Tommy Gooch, you are starting wide receiver and you're starting slot wide receiver. I, yes! Tomothy Gooch, Thomas Edward Patrick Gooch III, you will take this team to the fucking playoffs. I'm so over the Sun Belt. I'm sick of whomping on Northern Illinois to lose to SMU. Oh, this is the best I've ever felt about this team. Take me home, country roads. Sun Belt champions, baby! I simmed up to the bowl game. So obviously we're gonna get a bowl game because we just won the Sun Belt, but I don't know anything else yet. This is Jeff Roy's first year as a starter. I'm sorry, Schroeder. Dude, my D-tackles just love to get Defensive Player of the Week. Roger Hicks Jr. I assume we got offensive too. Tell me it was Jeff Roy. Oh, yo. This dude averaged 1.2 yards per carry, but got three touchdowns. That's a shark. That's a touchdown shark. Ooh! oh shit. Oh shit. Oh my God, I think we went undefeated. I just won Coach of the Year for the first time ever. And after 13 years, I win Coach of the Year. I'm the Old Dominion Monarchs. The Broyles Award for Coordinator of the Year. Come on, give me something else. Arizona State wide receiver wins Eisman, okay. We got Scheme Guru unlocked. Go to the coach ability screen to purchase the Scheme Guru archetype and upgrade your coach. What just happened? Number eight, Old Dominion, 13 and O. Oh. We haven't lost. Oh, but we still have a bowl game. Duh. Holy shit, we can go fully undefeated. Sorry if I'm a little too geeked up, bro, but I have been doing this rebuild for 12 hours. Oh, Jeff Roy! Jeff Roy's a god! This is a redshirt freshman throwing 3,634 and four. Monster! Nicholson got three of those touchdowns last week. And Tommy Gooch! You know, I'm I kind of surprised here. He got 75 receptions for an average of 11. With 99 speed, I expected that average to be higher, but hey, we fed him the ball and that's what I wanted. And look at this, my top three wide receivers, I'm Wusor, Gooch, and McGahee, none of them are seniors. And my, my quarterback, who's insane, is a freshman. And my halfback, who's an 85, is a junior. We're gonna be nasty for the next couple of years. Jeff Roy, dude, I could actually suck you off. Did Jeff Roy come close in Heisman? No. Okay, Heisman's insanely hard. I thought those were crazy good seasons, but you got Ramon Horn of Virginia. 75 overall, dude's third Heisman voting. And you got fucking Poopy Fufutu from Alabama. He's a sophomore. Whatever. Are we gonna go to the, we should go to the college football playoffs. We should get a bid. We're the eighth team in the nation. I didn't even think about that. It's a 12 team playoff. Holy shit. It ain't no bowl game. We're in the playoffs. We're taking on Oregon. Last time we played Oregon, we lost by about 30. The number three Oregon Ducks taking on number eight Old Dominion. All right, before we head into this first playoff game, against the 11 and three Oregon Ducks. Damn, they're third in the nation with three losses. I have to look at our roster. I mean, we're a legitimate program. We're an 84 overall. We've got this crazy offensive line. Look at that, right tackle, left guard, right guard, all in my top five. Percy Tangelo is an 86 overall middle linebacker. Got Jeremiah Kramer, 
Brian Silvestro, Bakhtiari, Nicholson. I actually have too many good guards. That's crazy. I have a sophomore guard who's starting over my senior guard. Can't make trades in this, but damn, impressive. This is all on the back of our 83 overall field general freshman. Oh my God, boys, we're in the playoffs. I don't know if we're gonna make a run in our first ever college football playoff appearance, but I tell you what, Oregon is not that far off from Old Dominion anymore, okay? This ain't the 71 overall Monarchs. This is the 84 overall Monarchs. And I'm bringing out the Powder Blues, yes, sir. Ooh, look at Oregon Stadium. I'll tell you one thing right now. This is the biggest stadium, the most packed crowd, and the loudest crowd that this Old Dominion Monarch squad has ever seen. Yo, he's got a gooch too. Oregon's got a gooch. It's Tommy Gooch's brother. You see that? Number 89. Come on, show me your backplate, 89. The duck is out here talking his shit. On our opening drive, we find ourselves in the red zone. Wow, we really find ourselves in the red zone. Good start, Old Dominion. We're just gonna hand this off and we're gonna utilize that offense. Dude, look at how many star players they have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven? I should have scouted their program. Jeff Roy is not a scrambler, let's not forget. But on Woolasaur! Hell of a play there, buddy. Three down lineman, outside backer. This run should be there. I need my left tackle to get up to that second level. He does! And we power in! Old Dominion is first to act in our first ever college football playoff game. Woo! They got our backs up against the wall, though. I see this back right here. He throws low! It's, it's deflected. They're gonna have to kick field goal. Oh my God. Honestly, I didn't even think I could make the playoffs as Old Dominion. That's how it started to feel. I mean, I guess I had never gone undefeated until this season. Back on defense here. We're on our stud middle linebacker, Tangelo. I'm surprised he doesn't have the star under him. I'm behind that, but he drops it. Oh my God. Oregon wide receiver with a dead to rights drop. Oh, that's, oh, he's getting chewed out. Buddy, you're in the Chick-fil-A. You're in the Chick-fil-A game. No. Damn. That pass rush was legit. Oh, wait a minute. They're gonna let me go for it on fourth down? Fourth and two, dude, I am not sleeping. Oh, maybe I should be. I don't know if we can run against that set. Look at that, they're overloaded. Just give me a little bit of time, boys. I'm not asking for much here. It's fourth and two, this is a huge play. That's an easy blitz. Honestly, I mean, no, I mean, we could take a field goal here. Third and seven, big down. Texas route is there, but is it enough? Oh my God, that's a first? That was a greasy first down. I really didn't think it was a first, but we stopped him on defense. We got a huge lead right now. 11 point lead, we can still put up points. I'd love to see a well round get open. You know what's funny? I just realized that Jeff Roy is a lefty. I'm learning right now that he's a lefty. It's kind of weird. Second and 10, I'm gonna try and catch Oregon sleeping. There's a lot of heat and there's a blitz. There's a blitz, exactly the perfect time to call a slip screen. That's how you win coach of the year. Let's go, baby. We're gonna run all go here with a Texas underneath and that's another blitz. Oh no, that's not the ball I wanted. I need a little more zip on it. You're not gonna pick six this, are you? Huge mistake. I needed to put a lot more heat on that if we wanted that to go through. Oregon gets seven for it. Oh, I just shot myself in the foot. That's all right, they scored quick, so we'll have another opportunity to score here. Ooh, McGahee is open. And that's, see, that's the kind of ball I wanted for last time. Let's make it easy. Oh, great downfield block! That's the kind of shit you expect at Old Dominion, baby. We downfield block. Oh, the Goochmeister. Don't sleep on the Goochmeister! Time out! 14 seconds to take a two possession lead headed into half. Let's go, Roy. They won't expect this. They seen all these passes. It didn't matter, they still bagged it. I would love if you're just open on this check. That make me so happy. No, that's not a fumble. No, that's not a fumble! Jeff Roy! Oh no. The worst thing that could have possibly happened in that scenario just happened. With four seconds left in the red zone, a fumble's recovered to the house. And now it's third and six. I'm handing this ball off. We didn't, we didn't build this dominant D-line for no reason. Get through it, Nicholson. 10 yards. We gotta take the lead here. Oh no, we, we went empty on that drive. Third and 12, we can make a stop here though. They're empty. I'm on Tangelo. Oh, he's got nothing. He's got nothing. That's a turnover, Oregon. Dude, this is a dog fight. I cannot believe that fumble. What a huge mistake. Oh, great, sit down. Beautiful route, Lloyd. That's, that's just great football. The only thing about Jeff Roy, dude, I do miss those scrambling quarterbacks because they're so powerful. Jeff Roy doesn't have it like that. I'm going back to the inside zone. Let's see how this looks on the left side. Great double, great downfield blocks. Nicholson's inside, down to the four. Okay, I'm, I'm not even gonna risk it by throwing the ball. I'm not giving up on the run. Going right back to power. Second and goal, give me a push. Give me a push, what a block! Scheffler with a pancake to put Old Dominion on top. That was 
One hell of a block, buddy. Oh, Montangelo, I don't know if this is gonna be enough. Oregon scores, but they left a lot of block. Can we catch him sleeping with a slip screen for a big game here? It's not a blitz. They do see it, but we still have blockers. Damn, this shit's getting flagged. Put a slant on Tommy Gooch. He's got 99 speed. Shit! No! No! Jeff Roy! No! Twice! No! When something stings like that, you don't forget. We'll be back. We will definitely be back. We won't make that mistake again. 31 to 28, the Ducks get the W in our first playoff appearance. At the end of the day, it was our first time making it to the college football playoffs. And for all the people that were saying a team like Old Dominion should never be in the playoffs, I think we proved them wrong. Despite the fact that we lost, I think we proved them wrong. 28 to 31 against the Ducks. And let's not forget Jeff Roy, who had the two big fumbles. That's a freshman. That is a freshman quarterback. Well, National Signing Day after making it to the college football playoffs. I mean, we're still a three-star program, so landing four stars has been difficult, but tons of stud three stars, which is exactly what Jeff Roy was. And EA, I know that the game hasn't dropped yet, but I think it's about time that we just took the Epstein last name out of the game. But what do I know? Well, in the preseason of 2037, we're ranked. So for the first time going into the season, we're ranked at 24. Let's take a look at the roster. Ooh, Cordell Nicholson is a 91 overall now. He's an interesting 91 overall though, technically 95, because he has 88 speed, 90 excel. Those are not, you know, traditionally good stats at all, but he's got 95 agility, he's got 99 ball carry vision, only 70 break tackle. 98 juke is nice. I really, I guess I just don't know the calculation on this. How on earth are you a 91? He doesn't look that good. Interesting, really, we're still a three-star program even after making the playoffs. Maybe we gotta win a game. Shane Scheffler, we saw him with a huge pancake in the Oregon game. Got Terrence Hogan's. Corey Washington's looking good. Dane Lawrence, freshman. And the guards are just like, I think just the guards in, in general are just a really strong position. Ooh, yeah, now we're getting some ball games, baby. Florida State, Texas. Yeah, people wanna play Old Dominion now. We're gonna back to back it though. I won't lie to you, I'm gonna step in on Texas and probably Florida State and I'm gonna sim the rest and that should put me back in the playoffs because we're ready. This video is probably 45 fucking hours so I'll spare you the trouble. Martin Pena, wide receiver from Texas, wins Heisman in 2037. What? All right, now I'm just straight up confused. We are 22nd in the nation and we made the college football playoffs and we're taking on Texas who we already played this season. Maybe it's because I beat Texas who's such a good team that they're considering me a better program than I am. Who did I lose to? So I'm 11 and two, so I lost to a Sunbelt team. I'm 11 and two. And we're, we get a playoff berth, but we're taking on number two Texas, who's gonna be even better than that Oregon team. I gotta figure out what happened. I'm shocked that I'm even in it. So Sunbelt Championship, we won. We beat the Raging Cajuns by a ton. Sunbelt, Texas State, W. James Madison, W. Coastal Carolina, W. Oh my God. Dude, for the, f oh my, this may be the first time I have ever seen us lose to Coastal Carolina. We lost to Coastal Carolina? They're four and eight. We're supposed to be a, we're supposed to be a dynasty. We lost to Coastal Carolina. We beat a ranked App State team. Okay, so you know what it probably is? We have ranked wins. We beat Georgia State, beat Marshall, beat Troy, beat Georgia Southern, beat Missouri, and we beat Texas. This is it. We have two ranked wins this season. We beat a ranked App State team. We beat a ranked, super good Texas team. One of their only two losses. So I guess the committee decided if we beat Texas, we just fluked against Coastal Carolina and we deserve to be in it. Jeff Roy's sophomore year was not actually that spectacular. 3,235 and 11 isn't the best. Nicholson had a great season. Muhammad Anwusor had a really good season. And Tommy Gooch, the Goochmeister. Balling out as usual. Can't not ball out with that name, bro. Seven sacks out of Hayden, six and a half out of Roger Hicks. And headed into our second appearance in the, I can't even believe we made it. I thought for sure we'd have to run back another year ranked like that. But dude, I mean, just look at the talent. We really do have a lot of talent. Nicholson, Scheffler, Washington, Hogan's, Lawrence, Roy, of course. It's, it's gonna be on Jeff Roy. Jeff Roy lost that game against Oregon, AKA I lost that game against Oregon. I may straight up sim this because I stepped in and handed Oregon 14 points. I think I got to take my hand off the wheel. 
Now, before we embark on this college football playoff journey, I need your guys' input. It's the year 2037. And if I didn't step in at all, like truly sim, I think it might take me another 10 years to win a full sim national championship. I'm thinking about doing a series where I go more in depth and maybe play two games per episode and really rebuild the program and show you everything. But I hope I showed you enough where you could follow along. So just let me know what you guys think. My goal right here, right now, is to take this old Dominion squad to the national championship. Here's our roster going into this game versus number two ranked Texas. Our best player is our star halfback, Cordell Nicholson. And I gotta give him credit. Old Dominion is not a run dominant program. Despite that, he came to this team, earned a 95 overall. He has gold tier safety valve and sidekick. He has improved catching and cut blocks. We got Shane Scheffler, who was awesome last year's playoff run. Our left end, Corey Washington. Another senior, last chance to play college football before he hopefully goes to the pros. He's got bronze quick jump, silver takedown, and platinum recoup. We've got two insane right guards and a bunch of stud sophomores. And probably my favorite player on this entire team is junior wide receiver Tommy Gooch. I honestly regret not redshirting him, but I didn't see his speed stat back then. 99 speed wide receiver. Frankly, in Sim, that speed isn't so important. He was a three star out of Florida, uh, but when I actually get to play, 99 speed makes a massive difference. The 85 overall Old Dominion Monarchs are taking on the 88 overall Texas Longhorns. Time Honestly, a miracle that the committee even put me in. But keep in mind, earlier this season, we beat the Longhorns 24 to 10. One of their two losses the entire season. I'll be rocking the powder blues today. Let's go, Monarchs. Texas Longhorns. It's a night game. It's outdoors. This is every college football fan's dream. I do not see a single Old Dominion fan in the stands. I'm gonna bring our safety down. It is a pass. And he's got a Longhorns score first. We're back on defense. There's a whip route. There's another hitch. But I'm on this one and that's going nowhere. All of my key moments to play have just been playing defense. So that tells me that my offense has really been struggling against Texas. Slip screen. I can sniff it out all I want and I switch onto the wrong guy. Absolutely nothing open. The stadium is so loud. It's fourth and two. You're telling me I'm not giving this to Kendall Nicholson, our 91 overall senior? Come on now. It's too obvious. We got such good guards on this team too. And we just got a safety. We turned the ball over, but got a safety. It's two to 10. And now we're back in the red zone. With just about 50 seconds left. I'm going for the RPO. And that bubble looks open if we hold those blocks. Tommy Gooch. Second to six, 30 seconds. We got to quiet this stadium with a touchdown right here, right now. Let's go. Inside zone. Beautiful blocking. With this set, I do not see how Texas stops this. They're overloaded on the left side, but still, they're just not close enough to the line of scrimmage. Look at the crowd. They were going crazy right up until there. Nicholson in the end zone. Tommy Gooch. Coach elects for the PAT. We get a touchdown and a two-point conversion. It's 17 to 10. Now, if this is a close game at the end of the fourth quarter, I'm letting Sim take over. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my team get this W. But for now, we've got a huge stop. Holding Texas to three here would be massive. It's a play action jet that kind of scared me, but they lose three yards. Bax doesn't have a route I gotta worry about. Intercepted. Oh, I shouldn't have taken that out. That was kind of scary. That was in safety territory. But what a huge mistake by Texas. An interception in the red zone. Offense couldn't do anything with it. And we'll start the fourth quarter in the red zone. <laughs> no way. So far today, Texas dominating absolutely dominating the ground game, but it's those turnovers that are costing them. They're getting all the way into the red zone. Couldn't convert last time. Can they convert this time? Does a handoff. It is. Their ground game's been great, and I whiff. I'm gonna hop on the safety here in case this is another run. Direct snap to the halfback. This is the college football playoffs. It's a pass. I've got bodies. I've got bodies. He's gonna take off, and he goes down. Fourth and goal. Oh, if he runs a counter, I'm fucked. It's a pass. It's a pass, and he's sacked. Washington, two times in a row, just made a massive play. First and 10, we have the ball. So many Old Dominion players have waited so many years for this moment right here. I've gotta utilize my blocking tight end and my great guards to get a gorgeous pull block. And Nicholson, and Nicholson takes the opening play for 19 yards. Third and two, they use a timeout, get to the edge. Nicholson! Oh my God, what a massive tackle. I almost should have dove there. I thought it'd be free. It's fourth and inches. Four down Lyman. There is no team on earth who can stop Old Dominion for those yards right there. Not with that set. Dog, stop! Why are you dancing right now? It's 17 to 10. Get to the edge, Nicholson. Get to the edge, Nicholson. Victory formation. The stadium's going crazy for what? We're not gonna fumble the sneak or the kneel. 
and Jeff Roy. After a cataclysmic fall apart against Oregon last year, Old Dominion is back and proved that they can play at the highest level. We beat Texas. And Jamie Westerman, the corner, is the player of the game. This, this is why Texas dominated us in stats, but we won the game. Jamie Westerman had a pick six, two huge interceptions, and Texas's season. And that's poetic because two huge turnovers from Jeff Roy is why we lost last season. Look at the stats. Bryce McGarry, the 85 overall. Texas quarterback only threw 16 passes. You know why? Because they ran the ball 24 times. For 92 yards, three and a half average, jeez. For Old Dominion, it was 15 attempts for Nicholson for 51 yards and a touchdown. Passing Jeff Roy, only 12 attempts. This was a very defensive game. Low scoring, but take a look at this. Two sacks out of Roger Hicks, one out of Kimball, one out of Tavares, and wait, where's the defensive touchdown? It's not technically. So Jamie Westerman has a defensive touchdown? Oh, it wasn't on an interception. It was on a forced fumble. Jamie Westerman rocked somebody for a fumble and took it to the house. I thought it was an interception. I was a little confused there. 17 to 10. And as of right now, we are the furthest we've ever been in the college football playoffs. Playoff game winner. Congratulations, you've won a college football playoff game. I waited 16 years to see that. I'm exaggerating. It's 2037, so I waited 13 years to see that. Roger Hicks, no doubt he was the Sun Belt Defensive Player of the Week. Two sacks, four tackles, and three TFLs. Monster game. Oh, we're taking on the orange teams, aren't we? You've been invited to play in the college football playoff quarterfinal at the Cotton Bowl this week against Tennessee. You know, the Cotton Bowl is where I filmed the cover reveal for this game. So Tennessee had the bye. We take them on now. Keep in mind, Texas was second in the nation. Tennessee is ninth. So hopefully this is an easier game. And look who's up there. Oregon versus Texas Tech. If I could get a rematch versus Oregon, I'd feel real good. Iowa and TCU, North Carolina, West Virginia on the other side of the bracket. I'm not particularly scared of any of them other than TCU. TCU has had the Heisman for like two of the last three years. So I'm not sure I want to play them. Let's keep the momentum rolling. Tennessee is a 91 overall. Look at that, the Cotton Bowl. You know, I don't like to talk about luck because if we made it this far, we're a damn good program. But we made Texas fumble twice and we picked them off last week and we still only won by seven points. I think we're gonna need to put up a more spectacular offensive performance this time around against Tennessee if we wanna take this home. I think we're gonna see this a lot. The defense is definitely gonna need my help. Ooh, Tennessee is rocking a lot more star players than Texas and the counter kind of gets me. But I tell you what, Washington has been everywhere in these playoff games. Great work. I'm hopping on Valencia for potentially an inside zone. That's what I'm worried about here. The inside zone, there it is. There it is, dive early, good, force him outside. Hey, that early dive looked stupid, but he couldn't shoot that gap. He jumps to the edge, he's got nothing going, and this has gotta be a pass. Two unsuccessful run plays. They're in no huddle on third and goal, it is a pass. He's gonna take off! Second and six, Jeff Roy, Cordell Nicholson. A decent cut, but I don't think that was the best way to run that right there. I'm gonna run all go. I've got Baggett and Nicholson here. So my two options, uh-oh, Baggett! Oh, Jeff Roy! I need you there, buddy! I don't think I can. I'm gonna motion whistle over, see if that shifts their defense. It does. It looks more realistic now. I gotta beat that linebacker one-on-one -on -one, though. Fourth and three, I'm going for it. Get to the second level. They do, I get flipped! Tennessee ball! Oh my God, I thought I got it. Risky play call gives us nothing. Luckily, my offense came up big. Tennessee scored again though. It's 14 to seven. It's gotta be a run. No, it's a pass. He's got the hitch in the middle because I vacated. Oh, don't let him in. Let's make a stand. Hold him to a field goal. And don't let him chew his clock either. We know this is a run. Lead key, I need you right here. This is a run. We know it's a run. Oh, it's not. 21 to seven, but I get an opportunity at a two minute drill. Where's my boy Gooch? I need Gooch right now more than ever. Going play action. What are they running? They're going to leave. Muhammad on Wuasor. If that was a better ball, it's a touchdown, but we'll take it. What kind of defense was that? Tennessee with a huge mistake. Now it's first and 10. I'm actually gonna, no, take our yards. Play action again. We've got a little bit of room with Lloyd who makes a tough catch. Reset the downs. Ugly. Oh, check down, easy. Check down Maestro and it's Okoronkwo. The backup is in. Take some easy yards. That's a first down. Don't gotta worry about burning a timeout here. Step up. <laughs> they don't expect it. Jeff Roy and his 75 speed. That was the sketchiest audible of my life. It's 14 to 21. They couldn't have put me in a better spot. We got an RPO 
I'm not reading the defense. I'm handing that off to my 91 overall halfback. Second and goal. We're going back to the pass. Oh, they don't have it. They don't have the flat. Oh, Karan Kuo! Come on, boys. Give me a push. We're going jet inside zone. Let's see if this is man. It is. It's man. He's following. He's following. Beautiful. Juke. <laughs> Damn, is Nicholson hurt? Like, is he actually injured? Because I still have Okoronkwo in right now. Andre Okoronkwo. Six attempts, 19 yards in the touchdown. I can't believe Okoronkwo is still in. We'll go to the pass here. Oh, he's there. Oh, wait a minute. Go yard! Lloyd! Caught. We take the field goal, make it 24 to 21. Zach Kessman, probably the biggest field goal of his life. Tennessee is loaded with star players, but they find themselves losing by three to Old Dominion. First play, rocket. No bueno. We worked so hard for this team. Let's let them ball out. Oh, he's so fucking fast. Look at the angles. This dude's a monster. Stop. Give me another opportunity. Rocket. Intercepted! Intercepted! I thought that was a touchdown. If he puts that ball a little bit higher, we're down by eight. And look at that. There's Old Dominion fans in the crowd today, baby. That guy's in piss. You're in piss. Your girlfriend won't help you, bro. That's an RPO peak zone bubble formation. Not only that, I'm gonna motion a man over motion. What the fuck? But it's a safety. No, it's a... That's the most immersive thing I've ever seen in a football game. That shit can happen. I watched it happen to Peyton Manning on the first play of the Super Bowl against the Seahawks. And frankly, I was gonna say that's a safety, but that's if we recovered it and got sacked. But guess what? This is better. I mean, you don't ever want that to happen, but at least with a minute eight and three timeouts, I have the opportunity right now to win this game. I can win it all right here, right now. Clear, clear, clear. You know damn well who that is, cause he's got 99 speed! I know. It, ah, it was so hard to make that decision, but I did. Here's what I'm thinking. If I score and I get my PAT, we're up by three. They've got a timeout in 50 seconds. I don't know how I feel about that, but I, I think it was the right call. You know exactly what I'm running here. I'm running right at your fucking teeth, Nicholson. Come on! All that galaxy brain thinking to burn an extra four seconds, but it's football, baby. I need to guess pass next time. Oh, he's gonna take off. I love that. Yeah, slide before. There goes a timeout. Love that. Guess and pass here. I see the corner route. Nobody! Nobody! He sucked! The clock is ticking! Fourth and ten. Right here, boys. We can end it. Right here, we can end it. I'm sending a blitzer. I'm, I'm sending Baz Knight. Five-man blitz. Is it open? No! That's ball game! We snapped the ball into the end zone for a touchdown. We answered back! And we win the Cotton Bowl. Tennessee is in piss. Jeff Roy, 380 passing yards, two touchdowns. Very realistically, could have been three. But Tommy Gooch controversially steps out of bounds. Dude, I got to give it up to that Tennessee quarterback, though. That dude's fast as hell. He was putting his life on the line. Nicholson was 16 for 57. A touchdown from Jeff Roy, Okoronkwo, and Nicholson all on the ground. Tennessee was 21 carries for 85 yards, and their quarterback took one in. 100 yards for Muhammad, 81 for Lloyd, and 131 on only three catches for Gooch. And he had a tutty. I honestly do believe that Tommy Gooch made the biggest play of the game. And um, in spirit, the Goochmeister is our player of the game. Quarterfinal playoff game winner. My heart rate is so high right now. I'm fairly certain we have maxed our coach level as well. Corey Washington absolutely earned it. And this should be Jeff Roy, if I had to guess, yeah. But he did have a monster game. And he had a touchdown rushing, too. Number one ranked Oregon. I'm getting my rematch. I need to see Oregon's roster before I do this. Oregon. Jesus. Chill out. Lawrence Weathers dominated us last time, and he's still there. That sucks. So they got monster defense. Look at this. Outside linebacker, middle linebacker, right end, right outside linebacker, middle linebacker, right end. Top six players are all defensive. And on offense, they got a 95 speed wide receiver. Who's the quarterback? This is about the only good thing I can see. Their starting quarterback's a sophomore field general. So I'm hoping that inexperience will hurt him here. He has bad deep accuracy. Okay. The game of the week. I mean, yeah, it's the game of the week. Are you kidding me? 90 overall Oregon. Taking on Old Dominion. This close to beating Oregon last year. I will say this is a significantly better Oregon team than last year. They're the best team in the nation. I almost want to think about this as the national championship. If we get past Oregon, I'm confident we get past whoever's on the other side of that bracket. There's no key moments until the fourth quarter, but we have a lead. We have a seven point lead and they're bringing me in on defense to close this out. Okay, that crosser's not gonna have it, please. Gets the ball away. Oregon still has all three timeouts, so even if we get the stop, it's not quite over. But wow, could we put ourselves in a good position? Come on, Oregon. No. I left that. Okay. Damn. 
I dropped back way too fast. My zone. Motions the running back out. Throws to the boundary. Hit him in the ankles. That's a young quarterback with not the best overall. He's probably one of the lowest overall players on this entire team is Oregon's quarterback. Another halfback motion. Oh, wow. That's a nice play. Big hit. Keenan is looking composed back there. Is this a run? No. Oh, he's going to go halfback. No. Yeah, he does. Get there. Westerman. Jamie Westerman coughed up the fumble against Texas. Makes a great tackle there. That halfback's going to be open. Damn. I expect better coverage out of Valentine there. They're not in the end zone yet, and they need seven. Baz Knight. I'm on this. Game on the line. Fourth and nine. Everything right here, boys. Everything. Everything. He could have caught that. He really could have caught that. It was tough, and it might have been out anyway, but a few good first downs. This ball game's over. We're going to go to Nicholson. Who else? Nicholson will take five after a big hit. There's a timeout. Get this. No way we get this, right? No way we get this right, McGahee! Come on, baby! Come on, baby! That was so risky, but they were pressed up so close. Look at that pocket, too. Clean. Beautiful ball. One timeout left for Oregon. We can milk almost the entire clock here, but not quite the whole thing. We need a first down. Nicholson with the worst spring tackle you'll ever see. Outside zone on third and 14. No way. Ooh. Oh, please don't punt that. Please let that clock go down. Don't even think about punting that. Nobody, I was so scared that the sim logic was gonna do that. And it's out at the 26. That's actually like, this is not a good punt either. That's honestly on me. Sometimes it just does that. If you click next play, it'll forget the down and distance. So now Oregon's got 36 seconds. It's still not a lot of time, but that is a very deep pass. You think I just got in a car crash with where my heart rate's at? No, yes. There's nothing scarier than seeing the quarterback launch a ball that deep. Third and 10, 22 seconds. A sack would virtually end this game. Get home, get home. He launches. Nobody's home. That was bagged too. That was probably the best way to throw that ball because that could have been an interception. But it is fourth and 10. The final play caught. Please tackle him. They're gonna spike it. They're gonna spike it and they're gonna have maybe two plays from the 17 yard line. No, nine seconds. Come on D-line, I need a push and I need it now. Get home, out of bounds. Six seconds, third and 10. Please boys, please. God, those seconds from that punter. Laser. It's the final play of the game. Three seconds for the rest of your lives, gentlemen. The Monarchs are only sending three. It doesn't look like he has anyone. He's still in a clean pocket. Get home. He dropped it. Oregon cannot catch the football. Oregon can't catch the football. He fucking dropped it. He dropped that pass. That player is getting mail sent to his home from every Oregon Duck fan. That might have been the least clutch moment in college football history. That was the worst drop. That was open. He had infinite time back there, infinite. We hang on. Oh, I wonder if they would have gone for two. Can we watch that play back? I watched it. Dude, look at how clean this pocket is. One. I mean, how many seconds does Keenan have back here? Infinite. Those offensive linemen holding like a rock. The running back takes off. That's why. It's a running back, not a wide receiver. And he dropped it. I cannot believe this. In the biggest moment, the biggest play. And he knew it too. Look at him. Look at him turn up field and look at his hands. I wonder if one of my safety's abilities had anything to do with that, but that's a touchdown. Frankly, they never would have had that opportunity if my punter hadn't snapped the ball with 25 seconds on the play clock, but we got the win anyway, 28 to 21. And we're moving to the game I've been waiting so long to play. For the national championship, taking on West Virginia. This, I'm getting ahead of myself, but this feels like a cakewalk compared to the Oregon team we just played. We only really got through Oregon because the running back can't catch the football. West Virginia has only got one loss, though. Where are the Mountaineers? Jeez, look at this, dude. Ezekiel Norton. It's like a Viking. 99 overall halfback. 92 speed, 92 excel. It's pretty cool, though. Three and a half star program taking on a two and a half star program in the national championship. Their overall is actually worse than mine. Obviously got some studs. Their quarterback, Quincy Ivy, fast. 92 speed, 92 excel. 96 agility, 9 engine direction. Got to worry about that. The final game, gentlemen, it all comes down to this. Look at how high both the minute is. That's intimidating, I'm not even gonna lie. Watching West Virginia walk out here. The Mountaineers. Who is West Virginia? Geno Smith was West Virginia. This is a weird natty chip though, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of expected a Clemson, a Bama. I don't know. West Virginia versus Old Dominion in the national championship. Let's go to Nicholson on this opening play. 
Cheeky little inside zone, and he's ready to go. He feels fast today. 14 to zero at the end of the first, and we're still on offense. I'd love a blowout. I'd love to see a blowout here in the national championship. I don't care what the fans want. Oh, I could have hit Gooch, but look at that sit down. You know, Baggett has not got a lot of looks in these playoffs, so I'm happy to get the ball into him here. I'm really scared to run a play like Jet inside zone after that muffed, that muffed snap. I'm scared to run this. We're gonna motion over, fake the jet sweep, hand off Nicholson. Good play by the D-line. Roy is hot, so is Nicholson, but they're ready for my inside zones. We're not getting much there. Third and goal, big play right here. Lloyd, are you gonna be there? Oh, that's a tight window! Let's go, what a ball. That is 21 to zero in the national championship. And we're back on O. This is a beat down, this is a fake screen wheel. And that is a horrible ball. I don't know what I'm doing there. I have no excuses for that one. Luckily, we're up 21 to zero. Now 28 to seven at halftime. And it's a third down. They're bringing me in to keep this drive alive. It's third and two. You know exactly what I'm doing. It's our best player, baby. Follow those blocks. Look at the blocks. The wide receipt, the corner didn't even know what was going on. Nicholson, 11 rushes, 82 yards. His best performance coming in the national championship. That is what you would love to see out of the best player on your offense. I'll try and snap this because I really like how it looks. Do I have enough time? I do. We get the snap off. Edge. Blocks are insane. Get through him. We'll take a first and goal. It's 28 to 7 headed into the fourth quarter. 310 to 94. 129 to 44. 10.2 yards per play. Oregon was the national championship. This is just the victory lap. I'm going to go right back to this halfback slant. Those blocks were immaculate. But that backer shoots the gap real well. Let's run an RPO here. I don't hate this. I don't hate the option to Gooch here, but we got to read this. Oh, it's there. Mmm, got that pass off a little late. Third and goal. We're back in pistol. We may have to settle for a field goal here. Let's see what kind of push we get. I like it. I like it. Nicholson over the top. And he's going to go for the Bobby Schmurda. I haven't seen that in a minute. Let's go. The national championship is all but over. West Virginia scores really quick. And they're going for an onside kick. We're not ready for it. And they're just going to get this kick off. Go, go, go. Don't tell me. They scored again. They're going for another onside kick. Let's get in a base onside return this time, boys. What are we doing? It's 21 to 35. Stop. I was so nervous he was going to drop that. Oh, my God. Six hours in, I thought we'd never see the day. The Mountaineers got toppled. 42 to 21. And the Old Dominion Monarchs are national champions. Oh my God. Coach Matt Maher with the Coach of the Year award under his belt finally can hoist that trophy. Jeff Roy, 341 and five touchdowns. After going through the onslaught, the gauntlet of Texas, Tennessee, and Oregon, he made West Virginia look silly. Oh my goodness. Jeff Roy, 23 for 28, five touchdowns, two interceptions. One of those totally on me. On the ground, look at Cordell Nicholson. The best player on this offense, 17 attempts, 130 yards, 7.6 average, and a touchdown. On Wuasor with 103, Gooch with 86, eight receptions, and two touchdowns, three for Muhammad on Wuasor. And defensively, had a sack out of Hayden and Washington, no interceptions. For West Virginia, they couldn't get it going on the ground, but their quarterback was taken off like crazy. And through the air, 24 for 36, 250, and two is a solid stat line but it was just not enough today. National champions, congratulations. You've won the college football playoff national championship. Ironically, after winning the national championship, we are ranked 20th in the nation. I guess they're still doubting Old Dominion, but I'll take it. It's a preseason ranking, which has been few and far between for Old Dominion. The beauty of this rebuild though, I mean, we do lose some amazing seniors. I'm not happy about that, but look who's back and only a junior, Jeff Roy. An 87 overall is a junior. This guy is going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the nation this year and next year. And not to mention, he does have 99 agility for reasons unknown. But the reason he's the starter is 99 mid accuracy, 83 deep, and 86 short. Such a stud. We did lose so much talent, though. We're now an 83 overall. We were an 85 last year. I'm going to sim the full 2038 season on just autopilot. After winning the national championship, I want to see what this team can do. Hey, we end the season ranked still. We went 11 and 3. Looks like no playoffs for us. A little slump after winning it. But look at that. Michigan and Michigan State made it. And oh no, we did make it. Look at that. We made it three years in a row. They gave it to us as the 12th seed. And our first game was against Ohio State who beat us 31 to 28. So we, we put up a really good fight. And the national championship is Kansas State 
versus Alabama. Okay. Hey, we made it three years in a row. On full autopilot, that's pretty dope. And after 12 years of Old Dominion football, I wanted to see if we set any incredible records. We have one Sunbelt record. I expected a little bit more, but Earl So, if you remember him, our wide receiver that we drafted early on, has the most receptions in Sunbelt history with 292, but nothing else other than that. One national championship, eight conference championships. We got a lot of Sunbelts. And this might actually be the craziest stat of anything I've seen. Zero first round picks. Eight conference championships, a national championship, and zero first round picks. We sent eight players to the draft. And obviously I didn't have a top five recruiting class either. That is really cool to see. All right, boys, when it's all said and done, it's time to retire. Matt Maher, the legendary Old Dominion coach, is finally hanging up his jacket. I feel like Nick Saban, honestly. I'm the white Nick Saban. All right, gentlemen, that was one hell of a rebuild. Future rebuilds. One thing I wanna end you off with, future rebuilds are gonna look a little different. I'll do my best to find the best way to iron this system out, to keep a concise, fun video. And after this, I feel like I have a significantly better understanding. Hey, I love you boys. This was a monster and it was so much fun. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Peace.